to sell some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. Paint what you have. So... You ready for fun? For once in a while, I like you to think I froze up. <laughs> oh, you did too, didn't you? I was holding pretty still. Well, at first I was like, yeah, I guess I did. Let's get this fucking horse race on the road. Wait. Oh, there you <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Model Club TV, episode 43. Christ. A little louder, huh? What? Was I loud? Yeah. That's no different than usual, isn't it? I don't know. I'm turning you down. You give me a headache. Oh, my God. You suck. Now I just heard a noise. Let's start that over. Ah. I heard a, a, a Windows sound. Yeah, that. Whatever that was. <laughs> now you're going to do it the whole fucking show. <laughs> oh, but, you know, Kurt had a point. What? Is that when you put a picture up, if we could put a little ding, and then if someone's just listening, they can look up and see the picture. No. Because <laughs> those dings would be annoying as fuck on the audio version. And I ain't editing out dings and, for the and audio. <laughs> dings. It's a good you idea. A fucking ding. Except for the other side of that, which would be a nightmare. <laughs> and and what do we get? Three downloads? You know, no, actually, we get quite a few. A lot of people listen to just the audio one. We get more than I think. So, all right. Anyway. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Model Club TV, episode 43. Hold it. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, look at that. 43. Did it the correct way. How are you, Scott? I'm great. I'm As magic. always, Scott Johansson, the lovely co host. And I'm Jason Walker. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. No one cares. That's what it seems like these days. You're a bastard. <laughs> so, first of all, the first little bit of uh, information that I would like to share with our. Our audience is right. What 15 minutes before we went live, I get a message from a one Virginia Peters. I love Virginia. What a, what a sweet gal saying, uh, Hey, uh, I heard you still have not taken Scott, his hat and scarf yet. Scott feels left out because of it. And I said, he has a car. LOL. I have brought everything to him for the last two years. Not once has he driven here to get anything. He is a lazy bastard. That was my response. Did she tell you you were mean? Because she told me I was mean. You are mean. Have you not? Because I her? told her that that rat bastard has not <laughs> dropped off my hat and scarf yet. And she's getting ready to send me some, some booty. Yeah, that sounds kind of. Not some booty, some booties. Send me some booty. Okay. Hey, she don't have what you want for booty. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Bondage boy. Anyway. It feels um, like it, it was not that long ago that we did not do this, that we did this show. Yeah. And you know what would have been nice, though, about you dropping that stuff off? What? Is it was really cold and windy today. I could have used a scarf. It was. I'm going to bring it tomorrow. How about that? Is that okay with you? Great. That'd be it's great. still going to be cold and windy tomorrow. I'll bring it tomorrow. All right. Um, a after the Three Stooges conversation, uh, Jamie handed these to me, mm. which are from my jean jacket from junior high. I remember I had the Three Stooges bus buttons and I lost, I lost the Larry, but I have Mo and Curly still. So a little relic from my past. All right, Scott, you see any movies? You watch anything? No, no. All right. Well, that's so kind of what I figured. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What? what do you mean by that? You never watch anything. I finished watching The Peacemaker or Peacemaker on HBO Max, and I think it is the greatest thing on TV in a very long time. It is very good. 
I think everyone should watch The Peacemaker. It's funny, it's sad, and it's brilliantly violent at times. And everyone should watch it. It is so funny, so good. Sick individual, are you? I ju- you yes, <laughs> I, I am. And I there's parts in that that are just so funny. And legit, and it's like it's hard because I did not like John Cena going into this. I am a wrestling fan, as as you know, and John Cena. I I appreciate John Cena for what he did for wrestling and who he his character. Um, but some of the stuff he's done since with the China stuff, but uh, it, but this brings me back to actually appreciating John Cena. Who's John Cena? John Cena. Uh, Oh, I should do that thing. Uh, never mind. It's not going to work. Anyway, I implore you, and I know you won't watch Peacemaker. It is very good. Please. What's with the eagle walking? The, I, that is eagly, and it's amazing. <laughs> eagly. <That's>, see? <laughs> Sounds like a word Trump made up. Exactly. Bigly? That's a bigly eagly. <laughs> Dude, oh. it is so good. Eagly is the star of the show, and it's. I, I cannot recommend it more. It is the greatest superhero thing I've seen in a very long time. Uh, but other than that, I watched The Godfather mm. because I do what I say, unlike you. <laughs> I know. You tell me to do things, and I tell you I'm <laughs> not going to. And then you accuse me of not doing what so I said. So I say. promised I would watch The Godfather since I was movie shamed mm. last episode, since I had not seen it. And we got an email. Someone, a couple other people had not seen The Godfather either. And then someone watched it like more recently. Um, and they kind of had the same reaction as I did. And we'll get to that in emails. Um, the Godfather. Well, I'm going to start here. What's your biggest complaint about Lord of the Rings that you always say? Too long, too boring, correct? Sure. Right? Something along those lines? Yes. How is The Godfather not too long and boring? Because it's long. And not much happened. What? Do you and I mean? here, and here's the thing: not much happens. Not much happens in that movie. It's edited weird. It's so choppy. Michael is in one. His wife gets blown up. Then he's back for a year, but it's only been about five seconds of screen time. Then he has a kid on his lap, and then it's I'm the Godfather. It's so like, and the thing is, I didn't hate it. I like it. It's a good movie. I think I'm tainted because of all the other gangster mob stuff I've seen since this came out mm. that are, I think are probably better movies and shows. I, 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 I don't get why it's on everyone's like best movie list. And okay. it might be because I'm desensitized. Cause maybe when it came out, seeing the toll booth shooting scene, like would have been, horrifying to somebody but that's like that's a weekend here in the city like that's yeah or the horse or the horse head the horse i mean yeah that's cool but to me it's not shocking and maybe back then it would have been um i don't know the godfather it's okay it's not one of the greatest movies of all time (laughs) and i will also say this Maybe I need to watch the next two to appreciate this one more. No, you don't need to watch the third one. Okay, the third next one, one is jank. do I need to watch Godfather 2? The second one is jank. Or the second one is, no, the second one I think. Um, I've heard the second one's better than the first. Yeah, parts of it are. It, okay. it jumps kind of back and forth, though, too, between. Um, and I get time jumps. Yeah. Like, I, that doesn't bother me. It's the editing. It was, there's this going on, and then all of a sudden it's a year later, but there's no context to that. Right. Well, and so what they did, and I think they only showed it on AMC, but I'm sure some of our viewers will know. Um, at one point, AMC, someone edited the movies together in chronological order. Okay. So that everything was in chronological order. Okay. Um, but I don't know if it's been released that way in DVD. Well, that or- was my other thing. So I was going to watch it. I wanted to watch. I have a... a- H, uh, high def Blu-ray, 4K Blu-ray player for my TV, and I wanted to watch it like that, but mm-hmm. you can only get it the 50th anniversary. I just heard something on the radio yesterday 
that the 50th anniversary is happening like right now. And they released a set of everything in 4K and re recleaned everything up. But it was eighty dollars for this set, and I'm like, no, nah, I'll just rent it for five bucks. So and I'm glad I did because, eh. eh. see, and I'll say this: I thought Pacino was fantastic in the movie. His, yeah. his acting, but it, it's a different Al Pacino than yes. you have now. It is a very, and that's the thing that I think is really good. I think the acting is very subtle, and I think that's mm-hmm. a tough thing to pull off. And I think it was acted very well. Um. But what's funny is now we've gone from like <laughs> calm Al Pacino to like Frodo. Don't ever go against the family again. I love Fredo, you and you're Fredo. my brother. Not, not Frodo. Fred, got... Fredo, Fredo, <laughs> Frodo, whatever. That that would be great. Pacino like getting rid of Frodo. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting um, Gandalf's head in his bed. But um <laughs> so but to you know to, 20 years, 30 years later, you'd have Pacino going, Fredo, you're my brother. Don't ever go against the family again. He'd be <laughs> yelling this, you know. Yeah. Because I, it's like his whole voice changed. Pacino's whole voice changed. Yep. It, it's weird. It, it falls into. So for people, this episode is our top 10 movies. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But Jamie upstairs was like, Breakfast Club's on your list, right? And I'm like, no, it's not in my top 5,000. And it's one of those movies that everybody loves that thinks is amazing, but I didn't see it until college and thought it was dumb as hell. And I think this kind of, I think if I would have seen this earlier, I'd appreciate it more. Because I mean, compare like Goodfellas, that's to me far more entertaining than The Godfather or even Casino. It. You never never saw it. Okay. Everybody, you know what to do. Uh, Casino. Have you seen Casino? No. Oh, my God. (laughs) Have you seen Sopranos? No. All right. We're moving on. All right. The giveaway this episode, Scott, it is a Kaiju-tastic giveaway. Uh, Kaiju Fest 99, if you will. Uh, The first, we have two separate giveaways. We'll kind of go through this. And the first one comes to us from the Jaeger army. And the good news is I have the buttons fixed. Yay. The buttons are fixed. So from last episode, uh, I wanted to share, we have a pseudo pseudo verse creations button now for when that comes up with CG blade. And we also now have, and this is, is great time. CG who? CG, CG who? CG blade. Do I know? We, ha- we have, a Jaeger Army button because we, you know, do a lot with the Jaeger Army and they're on Facebook. So check them out there. And our first giveaway comes to us from the Jaeger Army, Jeff Jaeger, the sculptor. And Scott, what is it? It is uh, Jeff. First of all, thanks to Jeff Jaeger and the Jaeger Army, Paul Gill um, cast. And this is the latest in their Jaeger Army series, Stomp. And we've got a picture of it here, but. Um, so you get an idea of the size. And this is, and you can't see it in my light for some reason, but in the picture you can see it. So there it is. It's nice there. So um, so Paul sent me that picture. We figured said, out sending- what, what the thing on top of his head was. Remember you were wondering about that? Yeah, what was it? It is, is a it? mind control device, they told me. Oh, okay. It's not a laser beam. Because <laughs> so anyway, then what I thought about, what does he need a laser beam for when he shoots lasers out of his mouth? So when what? Paul sent me this picture that he's sending this, and it's purple, for those that can't really see it in my lighting, but it, it is purple, and we've got the picture here. Um, Paul sent me the picture. I'm sending you this. So we were talking. He goes, yeah, well, it's a special edition. And I go, oh, oh yeah, we'll call it the special Barney edition, the purple dinosaur. <laughs> and then so Paul starts laughing. He goes, no. He goes, no, now you screwed it up for me. Every time I look at it, I'm going to think that. Okay. <laughs> So I said, I won't say nothing. I won't say nothing. And Paul says, oh, no, that's okay. That, that's okay. So when I got this, man, I don't know if this is going to show up real good or not. Man, I sure hope it does. See what that says right there? No. <laughs> Screw you, Scott. Barney edition. You got to get closer. Really? Yep. Get way close. Get right up in there. There we go. 
So it's signed by Paul. It's an artist proof with original Paul Gill artwork. <laughs> Screw you, Scott Barney edition. That's pretty awesome. So um, when I got this and opened it, I laughed out loud. It was pretty funny. So um, what are we going to do for this? So this one, we're just going to say, hey, if you want the uh, Jaeger Army piece, just say Jaeger Army in the comments and you'll be entered into the giveaway for the Stampa. And you do not have to be a member of the Jaeger Army to enter this giveaway. Mm-mm. And I'm also going to say, if you've already purchased one or have one on order, yeah, let's not get in on the giveaway. Let's give someone a chance. Yeah. But if you do win and you are not in the Jaeger Army, you will be. But you have to let us know that, and I will send you a card um, and put you in the Jaeger Army. Cool. But if you're in the Jaeger Army already and you win, okay, then I won't send you a card. But yep, then we have a card. To not in the else. Jaeger Army. And you want to be in the Jaeger Army, and you win this, uh, you'll be in the Jaeger Army. I'll give you a card. Excellent. Okay. So for the second part of the Kaiju giveaway, our mystery donor last week uh, gave us five different Kaiju pieces. Some of them are full kits. Three of them are just the heads. So you're a modeler. You're watching a modeling show. If you can't find something to stick this on, or grind off the peg and make a cool bust out of this, you're watching the wrong show. So the first one is a Godzilla. Probably shouldn't say that, but Godzilla is the first one. The second is... Waiting for you to drop it, by the way. Rodan. I haven't dropped anything yet. Rodan is the second one. I'm going to flip on the overhead camera here in a second. The third one is... These are the busts. The third one is Gamera. Gamera, 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 you more Gamera. It's Gamera. If you watch the movies in Japan, they say Gamera. In Japan. <laughs> and so the other ones are. Okay. <laughs> so here's the other two. These are the, the, the other giveaways are, wait, here it is. It is the Gamera, but the, the full kit, but tiny. And the second one is the Godzilla, but the full kit, but tiny. So you get some really cool little mini Godzilla and Gamera and some large scale busts. Okay. I'm not even going to bother flipping on that overhead cam. And how we're going to do this one is all you're going to do is say Kaiju in the comments and you will be entered into this one. And it is my choice, which one you get. So you're just going to get one of those five. So if you're Kaiju, five winners, yeah, five winners, I'll pull five names next time and you'll get one of these coming in the mail. It will be a surprise. So, Kaiju in the comments for one of these mystery Kaiju donors. Um, of course, thank I get you the for big, printing them. I get the big giant thing. I got to mail out. I have to mail five things, dickhole. Dickhole. That's <laughs> nice. That's and nice. so that's that for that. Scott, you have one more giveaway for us, and it ties into our at the show movie. That's so, last nice. couple weekends ago, I had a project where I shelved my whole closet and I went through DVDs and stuff like that and gave some stuff to charity. Well, I came across this that was given to me a while back and it's a hundred years of horror, the complete collection hosted by Christopher Lee. Okay. And it's, uh, I think it's just like a documentary and I'll put the info up here. This is a DVD. Um, and never been opened. Although I think one of the DVDs is rattling around in here. So, Something from your house that's never been opened? Oh, my God. Really? Yeah, I know. Wow. So, anyway, (laughs) um, I'm going to say we'll just do put horror DVDs in the comments. And um, yeah, that'll work. Let's just and we'll um, we'll draw. And if you want those and you don't um, have to make separate comments for each one. If you want all, want to be in everything, just type everything. Everything. Yeah. (laughs) So So, we'll figure it out. I'll mail these too. So, hey, yay, Scott's spending money do is spend money <laughs> all right you you have a dog picture here what is this well um mr gill has got a new puppy on the way why would he do that what do you mean why would he do he that got another dog yeah he, this will be three i think oh. so um there you go got another cute little puppy on the way three dogs two spiders what else you got um that it that's it, I guess. Okay. So, um, what's this monster, Tweety? 
Paul decided to send me that. I think it's from a Warner Brothers toy when he sent me the uh, piece for the giveaway, the Stomp Jaeger Army piece. Um, because he thought I would appreciate this more. And it's, you know, in the realm of there was an episode where Tweety, I think, drank Mr. Hyde for me yeah, or whatever. I remember that. And so uh, I don't know if you can see the crease in the mouth, but on the back of it, I put it up on my shelf already, so I don't want to get it down. <laughs> you you push it down and the mouth actually opens and closes. So it's, it's kind of <laughs> like a cool. soft vinyl rubber Tweety. All right. So thank you for that, Paul. And Paul also sent, he sent me and he sent you too. So hold on. Uh-oh. I bet you'll come over now because there's something free here for you. And I, and I, I put the gentleman's information down there. Uh, the gentleman's name is, and of course, I'm going to blow it now. So give me a minute. Uh, Thomas Bruce. Retro Customs. Okay. Okay. And he's the one that does all these little VHS boxes for Paul. So Paul sent me a little goes to Mr. Chicken Oh, that's box. awesome. Okay. And um, little VHS box. and. Now, can you hear that? Is that candy or an actual little tape? That's a big old magnet in there. Okay. <laughs> and so you stick it to your fridge or whatever. Because Paul loves you so much. <gasps> I got something? Well, yeah. All right. I'll bring you Virginia's hat tomorrow for sure now. So the first thing he sent you was one of these fine Dracula AD 1972 magnets. Okay. Excellent. Okay. But. I think also in hopes that you'll get this painted for Wonderfest for him, you get a VHS box of Ooh, Psycho Gorman. Yes. Sweet. <laughs> Psycho Gorman. Speaking of which, so, and this will go into the huh. Ta-da! <laughs> and I'm just waiting for that thing to hit the floor again. Bam. <laughs> anyway. We'll talk about so that anyway, uh, TB Retro Customs. Awesome. Cool. Thomas Bruce. Um, the, the Facebook group is TB Retro Customs. Here's the picture. You can move it up and show yeah. it. Excellent. And uh, thank you, sir. Thank makes keychains, makes all kinds of stuff. So um, and very reasonably priced. So um, so it looks like we've jumped in, in uh, news and reviews already. So. Yeah. Well, I, I put it in news and reviews, but here was a good chance to throw it in there so all right cool so that's where we are uh news and reviews i joined my sixth patreon <laughs> this week. well of course you do i know i need to i uh anyway so the sixth patreon i've joined is and i hope i'm saying it right i got a message in to make sure is uh kuton uh figures and miniatures and i don't think it's cutting uh i'm a, i'm going with kuton and I love all of his work. If anyone is a fan of the show Vikings like I am, I, I, I think it's one of the best shows, along with Peacemaker, in the last few years. And it just ended. But great story, great characters. Again, nice and violent. Uh, but the characters in that show are what really make that show. And he has some incredible likenesses going on with the characters from Vikings. And... It's a great deal on his on his Patreon. It's I think nine fifty or something a month, and you get access to what he's working on in those Viking figures. Um, I think it's twenty dollars a month if you want to sell some of that stuff, which I might bump up to that a little bit later on. But the likenesses are killer. He has some other really cool things. The one coming out this month is I think he's working on now is Jack Sparrow, and last month for March was the Scully, and I think it's a great Scully. Yeah, there's a bust and a fi full figure. He has some other just, you know, art pieces almost. This mech piece with this girl is fantastic. The Ivar the Boneless from Vikings, I think, is uh, like the most dead on likeness I've ever seen of that character. And then my favorite Wait, character. You mean other than you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other people, what do you mean? Huh? What do you mean, other than me? It looks like you. No. Oh, you wait. No, that's not Ivar. This is Floki that looks like me. Well, of course, you're Floki. Yeah. Floki looks like me, and Floki's Floki Walker, my favorite character from the show. But um, he has the old you version. Should grow man bun. I should. If I the second I quit uh, teaching, I will have that on the back of my head because that's the only place I can grow hair. I will never go anywhere with you in public again. <laughs> Maybe I should be him for Halloween and just glue one on the back of my head. But 
Yeah, I'll uh, happily glue it to the back of your head for you. <laughs> You'd staple it, you piece of shit. Uh, really glue. But he has an old version of Floki, a young version of Floki, and just all around great work. Kutan over on Patreon. I know you can get this stuff separate, I think, on one of the other file trading sites, but please support the original person if you can. Um, it's great stuff. It's really, really good stuff. Please check them out over on Patreon. Kutan miniatures, figures, fantastic work. And I've seen a lot of, like, he posts on his Facebook, like, people have painted some of this stuff, and it looks killer. Mm -hmm. It's just really, really good stuff. So, like, again, anyone who watches Vikings will know instantly how good those are. So, please, check them out. And I'm excited to see what other stuff he comes out with, because, and, and we talk about it all the time, the, the 3D printing has really, I mean, brought me back to garage kits and building models, because... The characters, the the subject matter, I find the stuff I like is is there, and it's not in the traditional garage kits. So that's that. Well, obviously, that's what drug me in. Yeah. <laughs> so Scott, what do you got here? Looks like a wolf man. So, and I'm not sure because I didn't get an answer before we came on. Um, this is going to be from Needful Things. Uh, that's what I saw earlier. Yes, and I want to say. Probably sculpted by lace, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Yeah, I am not either. And so I don't want to say for sure. Looks cool. I, if you're um, a fan of that character of that Wolfman version, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, I sent Rob a message, um, but he didn't reply. If it's not lace, and we'll correct it next time. Um, but uh, yeah, whoever it is, it's nice. So <laughs> beautiful piece. Uh, I mean, you're going to get a large gargoyle. You're going to get the figure like that'll end up looking yeah. pretty cool. You can do some cool stuff with a background, even on that with the moon, some mm -hmm. good lighting. Good stuff. I mean, I wish it was a better movie, but you know, yeah, yeah. I, it was great until the end. <laughs> I thought now speaking of a good movie, but it didn't make my list. Speaking of a good movie, this next one is going to be from Vince Herman, Saturn limited models. Nice. More of their stuff. Uh, the mysterious island bird attack and um this is uh the figures are sculpted by joel adati and the base by our friend phil kupka who apparently has forgotten how to send us emails uh, so yeah, um that's okay he hates us phil hates us no but anyway so this is a scene from mysterious island and i think this is their second one because they did the one with the crab yep i think we showed earlier yep. so um Find Vince Herman. Um, I don't know if he's got a Saturn site. There's but... yeah, there's something I because I know I've linked to it before. It'll be in the in the description. Get, so, find but, a way to um, get there. Yeah. So there we go. Cool. And um, the Ardith Bay and Bride of Frankenstein that we showed a while back that were going to be released by another company have been sold to hit the button. Our good friend Mark Worthling at Pestilence Labs. And these will be coming out. Mark's already got a list going. Um, so let's... Uh, yeah, I, I, I like both you know, of those a lot. Those, those are uh, both really uh, good. Because so, that um, bride I was for sure going to order, and then it slipped into limbo for a bit. So I'm glad to see it found a second life there. And it's a good piece. Yep. I think both of those are really well done. So... So, Sculpted both go. by Jeff Yeager, correct? That is, you are correct, sir. Look at that. Wow, so you'll have like, what, five Jeff Yeager pieces? Hold on, we'll get to that. Um, speaking of Mark Worthling, this one I'm going to put the overhead cam on for. Uh, I got my baby Hellboy. Or as we refer to it as the dick cam. <laughs> uh, yes. So I got my baby Hellboy in the mail, and I just wanted to kind of bust out so people kind of got to get an idea of how big it is. Now, Scott, I know you're, you're pulling for me to drop something this episode, as always, to keep the streak going, but this episode, I will not be dropping anything, okay? So there's baby Hellboy. Oh, look, he's got a little pee hole. Yeah. <laughs> does he, like, pee? Like, if you pour water in his mouth, does he pee like the old dolls? Oh, that'd be awesome. Know? But here's where I'm going to drop something, ready? I know it. I, I just, I know it. Uh, 
I'm going to pull the, I'm going to whip it out. But excuse me when I whip this out. <laughs> it's in this little bag. Look at it. It's so oh, cute. <laughs> so we have our Hellboy. It's a great piece. And I really didn't re- want to just completely unwrap this because I can't fit all this stuff back in the box. Just to get an idea how big the the right hand of doom is. There's the. Arm. Yeah. And you know what? The hand's big, big right? <laughs> Here comes Scott's jokes. Because he's a proctologist. That's why they call it Hellboy, too. Because <laughs> when he puts that thing up there, it's hell. Let me yeah. tell you. So, no, great piece. Thanks again. I love that they made this because typically everyone would kind of overlook this character version. And it, it's great to see it out there. And thank you, Mark Worthling and Pestilence Labs. I love my baby Hellboy. Did you, get, did, did you have to pay full price for that? I did have to pay full price, yes. And shipping? Uh, yeah. Yeah, all that advertising, that bastard just <laughs> keeps reaming us. I'm telling you, got a button even. Okay, okay he's got it. Yeah, you know what? From now on, if you have a button on the show, we should at least get free shipping. On- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> from everybody. Uh, but damn yeah. it, you want a button? You want a button? <laughs> but no, just kidding, Mark. Awesome. Totally, we kidding. know what a cheap bastard you are, yeah. but we're just kidding. We're just totally kidding. Ah, the ghost is back. Uh, so oh, that's look, the you dropped your camera. I, I did not. Nope, nothing has dropped yet. Don't even try. So that's the baby Hellboy uh, from Pestilence Labs. Okay, this next piece is uh, Sean Nagel. And Sean did a smaller version of this years ago. It's from a famous Monsters cover. And um, this is a bigger version of it. I think the price is $200. How big Uh, is the bigger version? Uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Like anything to kind of get a scale of that? No, but he said so on his Facebook page. So okay, go to Sean's Facebook page. Cool. The details are there, and um, you know it's cool. I have the original, his original smaller one, and I always liked it. So um, he decided to do a bigger one, and uh, so there it is. Yeah. So nice. That's a good piece. And then uh, we're we're gonna go into our good friend uh, Tony. I love three D printing, Cipriano. <laughs> Okay. And oh, uh, how much I'm, can we? Uh oh, what are you doing? I wanna, I, well, I'm going to show it too. I, oh, okay. it. I I don't know how much can we like. We have a uh four person message string with Tony. That is the highlight of our day usually, especially well, yeah. when Tony is having problems. Only when Tony's <laughs> having printers. Yes, <laughs> it's it's pretty good. So, um. And you know what? I don't think I'm going to pull the base out, but just to so you get an idea. Mm. That's huge. Yes, it's big. That is not what I expected when I was looking at those pictures. Yes. Oh, that is cool. So, uh, why not? We're here. Wait, how big is the T-Rex? Did you get the T-Rex too? I No, I only got okay. this. There's only so much room. Oh my gosh. I need that. For my my Kong shelf. That's awesome. So Tony sells these in two sizes. Uh, this one is 165 plus 15 shipping and handling. And Tony gives you. Tony's on the selling, bottom of the Empire Tony. State Building and on the bottom of the bust. There's holes for um, venting uh, mm-hmm. for suction and stuff when you 3D print. And so Tony includes those holes. The plugs. And apparently they're 11 inches. Okay. Wow. And Tony's good at math. He's as good as me. Tony is a uh, math. He's right there. Okay. Now, folks, That's not even math. That's. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it is. It's 11 millimeters. Okay. okay. Good, good job, Tony. <laughs> and I might do a little how-to video on how to attach these without having them fall in the freaking thing. Oh, you know what? We didn't even talk about that last time, did we? What's that? My how-to, the how-to video. video. Because it came uh, out, I, I think, right that. before. I, I, we got a lot of good feedback on your how-to. So we're going to do yeah, more of so those. I might do another little one yeah, on that. That's a good idea. Um, Great idea. Keep it short. That's fantastic. Yeah, because God forbid Jason has to do anything. So, um, so anyway, that's the King Kong. There's the T-Rex as well. 
And I keep bugging Tony to send us some of these to put on our table at Wonderfest. We'll sell them for him, but we'll see. I don't know that that will happen. We may have some. But um, my my hope is that Tony will sell the STLs of this one day. And... <laughs> but anyway, so this is a really nice set, and um, so those are available. And moving right along, my good friend Tony. This is Iron Man circa 1968. Okay. And this one is a one six scale, 12 and three quarter inches tall, 185 plus $12 shipping. Uh, he only ships to the lower 48. Um, oh, poor Alaska people. But, but if you're coming to Wonderfest, um, from Alaska, if you're coming from can- like Canada, Russ Waddle's <laughs> yeah. coming from Wonderfest, uh, yeah. Canada. And um, Tony may just ship me his, and um, I'll cool. bring it to Russ. And this Wonderfest. is a beautiful so, piece, beautiful. But and I gotta say, when I when I saw this piece, the ad, I, I wanted it. Yeah. But then if you go to Tony's site, there's a video, and Tony printed one and primered it and put it together, and, and that's the picture um, that we have here, and that's a freeze frame of the video. But it looks so much cooler. Yeah. Um, than actually just looking at the renders. So, um, and Tony also, I, I think, can will paint these too for you. Um, oh, really? <laughs> well, I don't know. It says can be painted as shown. So maybe he's not painted. All right. Also maybe. comes with a Tony Stark head, though. Cool. So. Awesome. So uh, that, and the last from our friend Tony, and, and believe it or not, this is a cartoon that I don't remember watching. I've never heard of this. I have no idea what Courageous this Cat and Minute Mouse. And this is a six inch tall 60s animated cartoon uh, created by Batman co creator Bob Kane. I did not know that oh, either. There you go. So, um, and Tony's been, a, Tony's here. been a Come busy guy. To, huh? Tony has been a busy man. Yeah. If, yeah. If his printers would just plug and play, <laughs> he'd be a happy guy. That's why he has us. We're his printer support group. We are. So, um, yeah, contact Tony. You can find him on uh, Facebook. Also, his class is still uh, yes out there. Both still classes there. actually are still out there. So and again, um, we'll have everyone's information on our. Uh... That's going on, and um, you know Tony's got to feed his dogs. Just got a new puppy. Got to feed his dogs. So uh, help him out because uh, yeah, he's poor. <laughs> you can solve that. All you have to do is leave the door open, and it's less to feed, probably. Yeah. Wow. There you go. <laughs> no Kong for you. Damn it. I want an STL. Um, the next piece that has finally made it back out. And I've known about this for a while. Oh, really? Secret John's info? models. John's models. And that's uh, John Struck out in Florida. And his emails here on this card had bought the rights to reissue. Uh, the Janice Pierce Karloff tribute kit. Well, look at that. Now, I'm not sure of the price. I want to say it's in the $400 range, so it's pricey. But I saw originals go as high as $1,900. So, well, there you go. And this is yeah. all uh, above, above water on the t- like legit above board. Yeah, there's no above board. Okay. There's no bullshit. It was all done legally, and um. What I'm really hoping is Thomas Koontz gets one because I remember a couple of years ago when we were talking with him at Wonderfest, he had never gotten one. Really? That's right. Yes. Oh, man. And he was the sculptor. So I hope he gets one. Yeah, that'd be great if he could. Awesome. That's great news for the people that have wanted that kit and wanted it cheaper. Great news. Mm-hmm. Russell Roby's got something for us. Russell Roby, Bansy Studios, uh, Boris Karloff, and The Raven. Excellent. And uh, Russell's in the UK, but you can find him on Facebook yep. everywhere. And I, this is his latest piece. So Another great piece. Those classic characters he's been doing. And from our friend Jeff Yeager, this is Series 2 in his Aurora repra- Replacement Heads. And um, they're really nice. Yeah, that creature. And really you can nice. contact Jeff via... Where's the button? Oh, yeah. No, I don't have a Jeff Yeager button. 
you got the Jaeger army. You can contact Jeff on oh, the Jaeger this army. This counts as a Jaeger army piece. Let's do that again. You can contact Jeff via the Jaeger army or on Facebook via Facebook messenger, or if you're friends with Jeff, um, so this is a nice, I really like the creature. So, um, yeah, that creature looks good. That's positive. All right. So, you got a big anyway, kit in the mail. I got a huge kit in the mail. Just from our friends at Stan art, Stan arts, David, Stan and Laura. Wow. And it's the Frankenstein's laboratory. Oh man. And this is a really nice reproduction of three of the strict fadden pieces. Who? Um, 3D printed and yeah, jerk. <laughs> 3D printed and uh you know, just crazy. And it's there's so many pieces. There's an instruction book that comes with this. I kid you not. Oh wow. Okay. Just the time it takes to make that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like I know. So uh, some of these pieces are 3D printed. Okay. And uh, so you don't want to expose it to UV light or sunlight. To paint it and coat it with a uh, UV protectant. Okay. Man. Um, but. Uh, That's a lot of work. It, it's a lot of work. There's clear parts in here, and I'm just looking. Um. If a part is thin or warped, run under warm water, which will help it become a bit more flexible. Um, clamps are helpful. And uh, yeah, it, it's just amazing. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what else, too. This thing has some really intricate pieces. And a couple of them he shipped with the support still on, and this one in particular. So my advice to anybody that gets this and is not familiar with 3D stuff, okay? Get yourself a big thing of warm water and drop this piece in it for a little bit. Let it heat up. And then get yourself a set of these. Um... Yeah. Where are they? Uh-oh, oh, we lost them. Sorry. I was going to say, this would be. Get yourself I... yeah. a set of these. And remember, I bought a, a different one, too, not too long mm -hmm. ago. Okay. And when these are warm and start clipping these things one at a time slowly. Right. You want it kind of okay. soft because if it's still, it could be right. brittle and you don't want to snap. You don't, you don't want to break right. the, the actual bars. And then the next picture is the front of it. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to, the, the actual bars that are touching that circle, you don't want to break those. No. But the supports are all behind there and just go through and cut them, take your time, cut them one at a time. Okay, it, yeah. it's uh, now this next piece shipped just like that. Oh man, and it came to me, it wasn't broken, it wasn't anything, and I'm just amazed at uh, and again, this is what you can do with 3D printing that you could never do this. And 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 I'm, I yeah, certainly don't want to compare the pieces. Like, how would you cast that? <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to compare the pieces because it's apples and oranges. Um, but Matthew Lawrence did a version of this as well. And he gave you wires and a little jig that you had to coil those around and make them. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, there was, there's no way you're ever going to print those, but yet, uh, or uh, cast those, like you just said. So yeah. anyway, but there we go. So, and then there's clear parts. Um, it could be light. If you want to light it, you can. I think so. I, I think if you're creative anyway, and wanted to, okay. you could. Yes. Yeah, you might have to do a little prep work, but what you yeah. don't have in, in 3D printing is pinholes. It looks like the kit is well engineered. Really nice. Gorgeous. Okay. Um, you know, it's gonna take a little work to assemble it just because it's you know, it's a lot of pieces, but that's what the instructions are for. Yeah. And these are awesome people. And if you have any problems with anything contact them by any means it's beautiful and anyone that got the tauntaun kit i guess it's the same box that it comes in it's the same big giant box yeah. that it comes in but very well packed awesome awesome piece cool. and um you know it's like a resin kit you're gonna do a little prep you're gonna sand some things off and you're gonna whatever but 
when it's done, man, this is, and he's got, there's a clear tube that goes on top of the one piece. And I don't know where he got this clear tubing from, but it's beautiful. And it's, it's, you know, it's small, you know, okay. but it fits in the piece. Perfect. I mean, this, this thing is engineered to the point and you can see here on the base, those two notches that come down. Yeah. And the back wall, and I think I put a picture of the back wall on here somewhere. Maybe the whole picture didn't come out. No, it didn't. Maybe I didn't. Um, but the back wall is tall, man. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah you can't it is. Get in the frame. That's how tall it is. But it's big. But it has the same two notches in it. And in the instructions, David um, basically. Um, Shows you, and, and hold on, we're going to back off this a little bit, how you can put little brackets there to get, get yourself a couple little L brackets uh-huh. and put them there. So For weight, okay. Actually, again, I can't recommend this enough, and especially, this thing is $250, okay? Now, if you don't want the wall and the base, I think you can get the three pieces of machinery for 200 and I almost went that route thinking i can make my own base but you know what for the extra 50 bucks this base is beautiful this this thing is beautiful yeah this so is- real quick a mark worthling i noticed on his facebook page had a little how-to video on how to use that adhesive he likes for that kind of that putty yes um, magic ma- what was it called magic uh, magic sculpt magic sculpt not magic epoxy. sculpt but it was the there it's a different thing than magic sculpt um but I'll I'll see if I can find that link. It's Magic Sculpt's the brand. I think it's Magic Sculpt. It's a it's brand. A box. Yeah, it's, it's their it's their adhesive box. stuff. So it's good stuff. Stan Arts. This thing is beautiful. The price is fan. Let me tell you something. I 3D print for people, <laughs> and there's no way I would 3D print this for what they sell it for. So yeah, folks, I don't know how they're doing it. Get out there and buy it now because before they wise up. <laughs> before they wise up and. uh but they're awesome, and that's part of what they do is they try to keep their stuff affordable. And yeah, um, that's good. Uh, again, I, I can't say enough about them. They're they're fantastic, super people. So well done. All right, our well winner corner. Well's got a couple kids. Well's been feeling a little under the weather. Man, our news and reviews. We have a lot this. Let's yeah, go. I know. What's up? So uh, Well's piece here that he just did are the Impossibles. What's that? Now, this is their alter egos. What's the Impossibles? He's going to do them in superhero form as well. What's the Impossibles? It's a 60s cartoon, Jason, before you were born. But so. what is it? Like, what is the premise? The <laughs> premise is they were on with Frankenstein Jr. And I'll be honest, I didn't watch the Impossibles. So I probably will not get this piece. But oh, I got to say, look heart. at it. It's beautiful. But he's also going to have them in superhero form as well. Oh, and so they're like a superhero team? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And they have a car and all that. And I think what would be cool is that he made the base so that when you turned it, the superhero versions were on the other side. I think that might be cool, would, but I don't know what he's got planned. Yeah. So um, I sent, well, uh Chitu box because I'm trying to explain to him about these big bases. You got to cut them so people can print them <laughs> on at least a Saturn. You know, yeah. I know the Jupiter's coming and you can print them bigger at that point, but you know, that's yeah, that's a good idea. At and Rocky and my Bowling request, uh, well has done uh, your favorite moose and squirrel, Rocky oh, and cool. Bullwinkle. Very cool. And uh, there's gonna be a second Bullwinkle too. That's all I'm gonna really okay. There's gonna be a version two, but that's all I'm gonna say about it for right now. All right, so. excellent. Well done, well. Well is busy, busy, busy. And I got a couple things in the mail. Do you want me to show those? Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff. I got other stuff too. (laughs) Okay. So today, actually, I got from Cult TV Man the fourth and final in the series of Wacky Racers cars, the Turbo Terrific. Well, look at that. And this is one as a kid I never had. Okay. Um, I had a built up when I started collecting models again, but so I haven't even opened one yet. So this is the uh, Turbo Terrific with Peter Perfect, and this completes the uh, group. And I wish they would make new ones because it would be awesome to have the whole series. So you think they will? 
Do you think they'll do that? The cost too much to re-engineer and redo everything? It would require a sculpt, and yeah. you know, it's not just a case of getting a mold. All right, I have two more, couple more things. First thing I got this week, I, I've been having <laughs> uh, my eyesight's terrible lately, and I need readers, and I really need to go get real new glasses. But I kept getting, I fell victim to an Instagram ad, and I got these, which are from a company called Click. C L I C and they have a they wrap around your head this way and then they break apart and you can hang them on your neck. And they also like flip down and like and I have a giant head, like a big fat idiot head. <laughs> I do. So they expand you can pull them out like this way and they also you can expand them or contract them that way so they fit your people like me that have giant that whiskey head um but they're good so, they're like it's i really i haven't so i think it there's a, a magnet there that yeah and i wonder you know what i thought about instantly and i wonder if you're going to say the same thing the jerk oh please tell me you've seen the jerk i've seen the jerk but it's okay. been a long time you know the part with the glasses where he invents the hook for the glasses to like and so then everyone goes cross-eyed from the from the hook on the glasses and everyone and he gets sued and everyone's like walking around cross-eyed because of the no, glasses he invented. Yeah. So I was like, oh shit, is this magnet going to make me go cross-eyed? But they're like, it works. And I haven't misplaced my glasses. And when I need them, they're there. And click, done. So, so what I don't understand, click old glasses, man, is why you have to wear your readers down there. What do you mean? So when I wear readers, I wear my readers just like this. Oh, because okay. I need glasses for far as well. But it, but for things like the computer screen that's right here, I don't need anything. And if I so wear, you wear contacts, no. If I okay. have readers on, I can't read the screen. Gotcha. So well, I see now readers will make like, the screen blurry for me. Now these yeah. are bifocals that I have on right. Well, now. Well, see, I don't have. I need to get. I need official trifocals, really, because I need stuff for far. I need stuff for close, and I need nothing in the middle. So I do too. But the, the close, the the distance thing isn't that important to me. Because I can still see pretty well. <laughs> okay. But like for the computer, I can't see the computer. So these are bifocals and the top is computer and the yeah. bottom is read. See, okay. I don't need anything and, for the computer. Like that, that distance is fine. Yeah, it's coming. That's where I know it is. <laughs> um, it's coming. I was talking to uh, Paul Gill the other day about his. Uh, is he going blind? His no, he's not going blind, but you know, he needs glasses too, but he's not giving it. Well, I mean, that's what I'm worried about. My grandma is. My one gram I have left is 90, going to be 96, or is 96? Um, and she's pretty much blind. And I know it's coming for me one day, and it's just, that's my biggest fear at this point. It's good, because at least she can't see you. So that's, that's true. Good. <laughs> uh, I bought a model kit. Wow. Where'd so you get does, that? Does this up my Grim Reaperness? Or my Jim, Jeff Yeager. Your Grim Reaperness? Yeah, it helps my your Jeff Grim Yeager. Reaperness. Your Jeff Yeagerness? Uh, I had to go pick yeah. up something for Jamie out at Ikea. And no, not at Ikea, at another place that was near the hobby store. So I ran in there real quick. I was like, oh, I'll get that. So, huh. And I, I 3D printed something that I really like. And I want to give this guy a heads up over on Cults 3D is where I found it. And it is a troll. I, I, I printed a miniature. I'm going to put the, can you, that's actually pretty good. It's a troll for the game blood bowl. And for those of you who don't know what blood bowl is, it is a board game that is football, but played with orcs and humans and goblins and werewolves and all that sort of thing. And it's a great fun game. Um, but the star players and the big, a lot of the, Games Workshop is North. I'm going to get flagged in this video probably. And I don't want to, I'm not going to put out. If you want star players, go look them up on, on Cults 3D. Um, but the, they're big guys. Games Workshop split into two things. They have their regular plastic kind of stuff, miniatures and stuff. But then they, they, they shop some of that stuff out to Forge World, which was the resin kit company side of it. Originally, it was kind of doing stuff garage kit style. And Forge and Games Workshop saw like, hey, we like what they're doing, and they bought that company out, and so it's basically a division of Games Workshop now. But the stuff is super expensive, 
And when I buy a figure like this, like one figure could be like $35 coming from there, but shipping from England is about the same. So a lot of times these figures end up costing me $70 and I just can't, for me, I'm like, I can't do that anymore. So for a very cheap price and some resin, I think it was, I don't know, a $2 in resin, maybe not even. Uh, it's, it's a great little piece for the game. Didn't you tell me those are nicer actually than the game? These are, this troll is better than all, all the other trolls they have recently come out with for blood bowl. So, and they have a couple other star players. So it's on cults 3d. If you're interested or want to play blood bowl, Scott, I think we should, I should teach you how to play blood bowl and we should live live stream it. I I feel like I am playing blood (laughs) bowl once every two weeks. All right. That's it. Uh, workbench. Show that again. Could you show that again? What are you going to do? I, I just keep hoping you'll drop it. I know. I just keep hoping you'll drop it. I'm putting it down. <laughs> <laughs> Put it down. All right. The workbench. Uh, do you have anything? Did you build anything? You got another music box story for us? I no, no. I didn't appreciate your little, uh, you know, disinterested, you know, when I listen to you ramble on about some of the <laughs> shit you ramble on about, Jesus Christ. Um, nothing on the workbench uh, other than uh, I was printing something for somebody else. I got done. I said, all right, I'm going to print myself a small little figure. And this is Mr. Peebles from McGilla Gorilla. And um, you know what I like about a figure like this? It fit on one build plate. And just okay. Yeah. One that's like the troll. Like it just you know, it's such a good feeling. Yeah, one print, one, no. you know, and and uh, I glued this together in probably five seconds. I didn't have to sand anything. Same. I love it. Uh a tool that I can recommend for everyone, whether you 3D print or not, is a cheap little pin vice set with drill bits in it. I, I have one. You want me to No, I have I well yeah. I have one. And and you can get them on Amazon and pin vices are great. But, so sometimes if I let my 3D print sit too long on the build plate and it's hanging upside down, the holes will kind of plug up because I don't make my holes 11 inches like Tony uh, from the resin dripping and they'll kind of dry like that. And so Wait, I can't get the alcohol like won't go in there. How is that? I don't understand. I don't know. And we're going to edit just, this out. How do you have alcohol dr- or how do you have resin drying? I, I don't know. It, it's like it, but it's like it, you know. All right. So anyway, I take the pin vise, I just open up the hole, and um, huh? Okay. And I can wash it or do whatever I have to do. So that's weird. Cure the inside. So yeah, okay, get a pin vise. I have a couple things. I bought some paint. I bought some Liquitex acrylic ink to try for some stuff. I've been meaning to do. And then based based on uh, Jeff Camp's recommendation, I picked up the gouache white and black. And I picked up the gouache gouache. That's the wash. No, gouache gouache. Gouache gouache. G. Oh, my God, dude. G U G O U A C H E gouache. Gouache? It's a gouache? Type, it's a type it of gouache? Paint. Gouache. Gouache. It's gouache. Oh my God. Everybody. I've never heard of it. You've never heard of gouache? You sat through a whole interview with Jeff Camp talking about it. I was sleeping half the time. It's Camp oh for Oh my God. God. Oh, jeez. It's gouache. Oh, Jeff, it's a type it's a of joke. paint. It's a type Jeff. of paint. Um, and so I so, picked up so those. I picked up What some makes something gouache? gouache? What is well, gouache? More, it's really high pigment. And normally it would reactivate with water, but. This doesn't it once it's dry, it's dry. So it's a super highly pigmented paint and dries really, really like flat. Um, and I also picked up their the fluorescent set because I want to start painting the Psycho Gorman and I needed a couple colors. And I was only going to buy the two colors that I was going to need for it. But of course, when I drove, drove all the way out there, they were missing that color. It was the only color they were out of. So I had to buy the whole set for like, I think it was like. Because he can't order it online and wait a day for it. No, I wanted it not... like to go. So I got those paints and then workbench. I also, I put together the Psycho Gorman. I'm trying to get that ready. 
I've been printing my ass off for Wonderfest, trying to get all the Agent Carters. Oh, ready. You know, all I can think about with Psycho Gorman is uh, the talking heads. Psycho Gorman. <laughs> God. Yeah. It's Psycho Killer. It's Psycho Killer. <laughs> Whatever. All I right. got a feeling Gorman is a killer. He doesn't look like a nice guy. <laughs> He's not. All right. That brings us to the show's topic. Which is, we're calling this segment at the show. And I figured we, <laughs> this is why the great at the movies with Siskel and Ebert, right? Chicago thing. If you're from Chicago, you know what you're going to the show with the regular guy from XRT, who is a, was a character on the radio that would do movie reviews, but did it in a very thick Chicago accent. So I figured we'd take the two and mix them together and call it at the show. And Kendall Conniff in the comments a couple weeks ago said, hey, I'd like to know your top 10 movie list. And that's what it's going to be, our top 10 movies. Now, a couple parameters, I think, that I've told Scott, and I think this is how we want to put this together, is I don't think this is the top 10 best movies ever made. It's my top 10 favorite movies. I think there's better films than some of what I put on my list. and. This was hard. Was it hard for you? Um, well, what I found myself is going over 10. Yes. And then I think so, if it was a top 20, it would have been a lot easier. Yes. And, and <laughs> I, I couldn't put them in order. And, and my criteria was movies that I can watch over and over again and still enjoy. That's fine. Okay. okay. And, That's kind of how I did mine too. For an example, like and my wife loves Titanic. Okay, I and I keep telling her I know how it ends. You want to know how it ends? <laughs> but um, she loves it, and so I bought her the special edition DVD. You know, blah 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 blah. It's still in the closet wrapped. But if she's going to network, about, can we talk TV, about Titanic for one second and how sure. horrible Rose is? Have you ever seen the diagram of where he would have actually fit on that wood with her at the end? Oh yeah, yeah. And she just lets him fucking freeze. Yeah, he's and die, fucker. Out. Thanks for the diamond. And cheating um, on her husband. Anyway, go ahead. So, um, but my wife will just if it's on TV, she'll watch it. Yeah. Even if it's cut to death, she'll yep. watch it. Yep. Okay. And um, so I look at it and go, "That's, you know, what what would I watch?" That's kind of how yeah. I did mine too. Or movies uh, that I have watched many times although there's you know. only two movies there's two movies on my list i've only seen once and i don't want to watch one of them ever again and i'll huh. explain why when we get there um okay. so i think how we'll do this is i'll name one and then you name one or we'll either way but let's start with and and, and no. i don't think we, I these think, are in no particular order well, okay i was yeah. gonna say that all right we're gonna go in no particular order Except for your number one. Okay. Okay. Well, save one. the number one for last. Save the number one for last. The rest of these are not in a particular order. And we'll go back and forth. So when I told Scott about this, I think we're going to do a guilty pleasure of a movie that these are outside of our lists. A guilty pleasure, a movie that is pretty much terrible, but you love to watch. Or it's ridiculous. Or there's something about it that makes it a guilty pleasure. And you can explain why. And then some honorable mentions that we'll just do right off the bat that would be in my top 20 list <laughs> that did not make the cut. Okay. So I'll do some loathing movies. Some low, we, we, you know what? We should do that. That should be a list of different time movies we hate that everyone else likes. Well, I only put three on there. So, oh, you have a loathing list? Yeah, I do. I have three. I have maybe one. I'll, I have I'll, one I'll right on the three, maybe. Okay. All right. I'll think about it. Okay. I got. All right. <laughs> I could probably whip that together real fast while we're talking. Yeah. Uh, all right. I don't think I mentions. like Elo's. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I should do that. All right. So at the show, Scott, honorable mentions. Let's just have you just lift off your honorable mentions that didn't make the cut. Okay. And a couple of these were really close to making the cut. I know. I had to rearrange my list and, a couple of times because it was really hard. And some of them are, are movies people are going to say, huh? 
<laughs> but uh, Th- this, and, and what, I can't wait to see what people. But people are going to find out by this list. Okay, the fact that I'm even in the genre of garage kid hobby and <laughs> and stuff because my movie list is very void of of monster and horror okay. and sci-fi things at least these lists okay but i'll i'll give it some honorary mentions so okay. uh, are you ready i am huh i am yeah. i'm ready i'm listening okay <laughs> so frankenstein and the bride of frankenstein and I, and i put it together because i really wow. think it's a okay. two part story all right okay and i think it does hold up as a classic movie for one um, I think I can't watch them as often as I used to because I've seen them so many times. But to me, if you take the whole scope of the Universal Monsters and all this, I think these are the two best films. Okay. Okay. So how come so it's not on your are. list? Huh? How come it's not on your list? Because I, I, I for sure call it a top I was, ten. Okay. I wouldn't call it a top ten. I would have swore this would have been two. Universal Monster list number two. See? Okay. Yeah, all no. right. Interesting. Okay. This I like how this is going. <laughs> okay. The I other one, mention. and I mentioned this one last week when I was talking to Lace, starred Clark Gable and Spencer Tracy. It's called Boomtown. It's about oil wild- wildcatters. See, and Jason's just making faces. No, 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 no. I'm getting a pen. Getting a pen. Okay. I'm going to yeah, write draw. some of these down. All right. Boomtown. Okay. And that pen doesn't work. All right, Boomtown. Why Boomtown. is Boomtown good? You know, I just like it. It's a feel-good story. It, it's a story of two guys, how they meet, how they're successful, how they break up. How Wait, they... I just thought of something. Are we doing spoiler-free or are we doing spoilers? Um, I'll do spoiler-free, but I can kind okay. of, All right. you know, without spoiling the movie. Yeah, let's try and do that. Let's try and, because okay. people might want to watch these movies that we talked about. So these are two guys that, it, it's kind of their story, how they meet and how their partnership goes over the course of years. And um, Clark Gable, Spencer Tracy, Claudette Colba, Colbert, Colbert, who is, she's a beautiful <laughs> woman. Um, Hedy Lamar, who I think is one of the most beautiful women of all time. Okay. And for all you blazing saddles out there, go again. It's Hedley. Well, that's where the joke came from. And uh, Frank Morgan, who played the Wizard of Oz, is also in this movie. So, um, yeah, it, it's one of those things. And I'll explain this when I'm done with my whole list. Uh, another honorary mention, Mr. Roberts, with Henry Fonda and Jack Lemon. Okay. And, uh, okay. Um, Angels I think we're going 30... to run into that pro- the, the age gap. Problem. Yes. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yep. Okay. And, I, and I'm going to explain why. Angels with Dirty Faces. Um, it's a James Cagney movie. Humphrey Bogart's in it. Pat O'Brien. Again, another kind of corny gangster movie from the you know that time. But good. wait, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think we're going to have any of the same movies on our list? We might. Okay. All right. But I doubt it. Okay. Let's. Um, ooh, we should bet money. People should bet money if we'll have this one might movies. be. Um, but it, it's on my honorary. And I'll explain why it's not on my actual top 10. Okay. The original Star Wars, uh, episode four, New Hope. Not okay. on my list. Now, this probably would have been on my list had we not done Return of the Jedi and the three movies after that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, and I really liked Empire Strikes Back too, but I didn't put it on here. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, two Here's more. A, uh, uh, I'll say this about my list. And I, I, I mean, looking at even my. My honorable mentions and my full list and my guilty pleasure, there is not one sci-fi movie. Huh. Okay. Not one. Uh, believe it or not, that's my only one. Wow. Okay. See, that's, that's shocking okay. to me for both of us. Um, like if it was is, a top 20 it, list, there would be. Yeah. There absolutely okay. So another be. one is Remember the Titans, the Denzel Washington movie. I, I yeah. have seen that movie. And I think that's a really good movie. Okay. I, it's just, it's a good story and it's a good movie. Or no, wait, Based- I didn't see that movie. I saw Any Given Sunday. Okay. A totally different thing. Yep. <laughs> and then, and then here you're going to laugh at me. Uh, the last one on that honorary mention is Gone with the Wind. I still think it's a classic movie. Okay. And uh, there you go. So give me your honorable all mention. Right, my honorable mention. Gone with the Wind. I'm writing all your honorable mentions down. Reservoir Dogs. 
is on my, I, I truly, I, and it's, it's, it pains me that I have no Tarantino on my list. And I love Tarantino's movies. Like if it was a top 20, there'd probably be three or four on there. And I really, I think when I think about his movies, I kind of was like, okay, the one that like Reservoir Dogs was the one that brought me to him. I think it brought him to everybody. And it still goes back as my, like that and Hateful Eight. I like, I think the most after going back and watching everything. Um, but Reservoir Dogs. Um, Bad Santa is on my honorable mentions. Wait. That's not a guilty pleasure. That is not a guilty pleasure. <laughs> I watch Bad Santa every Christmas Eve and get wasted. <laughs> and watch Bad Santa and watch another movie that's on my list. Um, but I love Bad Santa. I think it is. I can quote that movie. <laughs> Would you like to make some? Can I make you some sandwiches? I love, I love Bad Santa, and I don't know why. It's terrible, but it is not my guilty pleasure. But I love that movie. Um, Bone Tomahawk. Have you seen Bone Tomahawk with Kurt I've Russell? I've never even heard of Bone Tomahawk. That's how I'm feeling this, how this list is going to go. Uh, so Bone Tomahawk is a horror Western movie that came out a couple years ago with Kurt Russell. And it is one of the best Westerns I've ever seen and one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. There is a uh, very shocking death in that movie that anybody who has seen the movie knows exactly what I'm talking about. And I highly recommend it. Everyone should watch Bone Tomahawk. Uh, I have two more. Mallrats. <laughs> Mallrats, I think, is one of the best comedies ever made. And it stars my high school, my sports icon hero. And it's funny because there was just a, a, a podcast that I was watching yesterday had him on as a guest. And Jason Lee. And I know you know, you have no idea who I'm talking about. So I was a skateboarder as a kid. Still, once in a while, we'll go. And my my favorite fall professional, down and <laughs> yes, bruise himself up. But my favorite professional skateboarder is Jason Lee. He was the guy from My Name Is Earl. Did you ever watch My Name Is Earl? No, he he was Earl. So, but he was a professional skateboarder when I was a kid. He, that was like his first one of his first acting roles, and I think it's one of the funniest movies ever. And that's a Kevin Smith movie, and he's very hit or miss for me. But Mall Rats was like it sums up my high school. Like that's we used to go to the mall and hang out and get in trouble, and do dumb shit, and it just, that was my, like, it reminded me of being a kid a lot. And then my final one. It's pretty much a miss for me all the time. I know. <laughs> I, <sighs> yeah, and Mallrats is the only one that's not for me. Like, the rest of I can live without. Mallrats, different story. St. Maud, which you, I know you haven't seen, which I think is one of the, the greatest movies in the last two years. And it was on my top 10 list until I thought of something different this morning. And it is a beautiful movie. It is a terrifying movie. And it's about, it's about a very lonely girl who is a, a live-in nurse for a woman with cancer. And she's kind of turning into a religious zealot as the movie goes on. And the thing I like about it is the way it's shot. And it is the most beautifully shot movie I think I've ever seen. There's an artist that plays a role in the movie and the way they paint. The whole thing looks like a Rembrandt painting, but it looks, I'm not going to mention the other artists, but it looks like every shot looks like a painting. With, it's, here's, a, here's a vocabulary word for everyone. Chiaroscuro. And it's the light and dark in a painting when you have a really light area or a dark area. And if you think of Rembrandt and how they, how light is, light is a character in this movie and the way that every frame is lit is just, so do they use gouache? They do not use gouache. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen. And it's just, I love it. I, I, it's the best. The music is amazing. The, I got it on vinyl and it's just, uh, anyway. All right. That's my honorable mentions. Want to do guilty pleasure now or later? Whatever you want. No, you pick. <laughs> we can do it now. Why All don't right. you go first this time? All right. Guilty pleasure. Beastmaster. <laughs> well, that's. Have you see, seen it? Have you seen it? No, I don't think I could watch ten minutes of it. Oh my god! Um, growing up, that's what's kind of funny about the guilty pleasure list is. My guilty pleasures are movies that I know 
a lot of people probably say that they're dumb. Except for one. One actually isn't. But um yeah, I would say mine isn't actually gonna be all right. what's categorized as a horrible movie that you like anyway. Okay. Because if it's a horrible movie, I can't watch it. So Beastmaster, when I was a kid, was on cable like every day. And it was there were boobs, there were monsters, there were ridiculous characters there were ferrets there was guys with big heavy metal gauntlets running around charging at people there's the other characters that's like they look like bats but suck the juices out of it it was the dumbest movie ever because it but i love it i love beast you own it on dvd i do not but if i if it's ever it's on let's see that's what kind of i started to get rid of my dvd collection because of streaming and all that, but hmm. I have watched it streaming recently. <laughs> I, I was going to ask of, of of your honorary mentions in your top tens. Do you own them all? Uh, I used to. Okay. Wait, my top ten. I don't own. Maybe three of them, and they're the ones that came out recently. Wow. See, I own every movie on my list. Okay. All right. What's your guilty pleasure? That's it? That's you only got one? Yeah, I just got one for guilty pleasure. See, you know, this was a tough one for me because I really like these movies, but people are going to laugh at me. (laughs) Okay. So the one is McClintock with John Wayne, and it's kind of like this cornball Western uh, with uh, John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara and a very young Stephanie Powers and a very young Jerry Van Dyke. Okay. And um, I don't know. It's just a fun, kind of typical John Wayne, goofy Western. Okay. Right. The other one is Yankee Doodle Dandy with James Cagney. It's actually, you know, it, it, it's a, it's the life of George M. Cohan, which Cagney won an Academy Award actually for his okay. portrayal. But um, it's not a movie because it's a musical. I remember Lace saying it's one of the few musicals that he'll watch, you know. And, um, the other one I have here on my list is Phenomenon with John Travolta and Kira Sedgwick, where he has a brain tumor. Yeah. And can do crazy stuff. I remember. Yeah. I, yep. And uh, I, I really, that's kind of a guilty pleasure movie <laughs> I like. And uh, the last one I'll mention here is Secondhand Lions. And it's Michael Caine and Robert uh, Duvall. And uh, the guy that played uh, Haley, uh, no, no, the kid that was in Sixth Sense. What's his name? Haley Joel, Haley Osment. Joel Osment or whatever. Haley Osment, yeah. He's in it. And uh, it's kind of a fun movie. You okay. know, it, it's kind of a fun movie. I so, think I might uh, have seen that. And I'm not saying my guilty pleasures are necessarily bad movies because I don't think any of them are really bad movies. That's just my opinion. Okay. So, you want my loathe list? No, we'll do that after. We'll do so, that. Okay. Last. And I don't have Let's a loathe roll list. in the I top got... 10, but we're saving our top for last. Okay. Top for last. You go first. Okay. This is one of the few obvious ones. Yeah. Let's go obvious first. Let's do the most obvious first. Okay. 1933, King Kong. Okay. I knew it was there. All right. Okay. Why? Why is it on your list? And I, I, you've said this before, but you know, it's for someone just, coming to the show I, it, for the first time, it, it was just I love the look of the gorilla. Mm-hmm. I, I just love everything about it. I love the story. I love the, the the premise. I love everything about it, except for the end, which King Kong would just knocked New York down and swam back to the <laughs> island and been done. But. Uh, <laughs> And and I used to I used to tell people it's the first ever animal rights movie of all time because it shows you take the animal out of its uh Yeah, I can see that. You know, and um so it's kind of a good lesson movie. And uh I don't know, it it's it's I it, it's just one of those things that as a kid caught me and never let go. Yeah. And still has it. So. Okay. So I mean that's perfectly and that fits into my most obvious which is Lord of the Rings, but I'm adding into that the Hobbit animated and the Return of the King animated. So all all five of those movies go together for me. 
Uh, and it goes to the same thing. As a kid, the animated Hobbit and the animated Return of the King just that's what grabbed me as a kid. It wasn't. But those aren't the Bashki ones, right? Yeah, that's no, the... not the Bashki ones. The the Rankin and Bass ones. Okay. Um, the Bashki one came in in between those, I think, Maybe. or no, after both. Of them. But and I didn't see the Bashki one until I was older. I was like the Bashki Gollum. I was yeah. Really oh yeah. Cool. I yes. Yep. Um, but my favorite Gollum is the one from the animated show, it, it, the the Hobbit, and Return of the King, and. It's the same thing. It grabbed me as a kid and it really got me into the Dungeons and Dragons type stuff, the fantasy stuff, the sword and sorcery kind of stuff. That's where I am. When I started doing this, I'm like, wait, I don't have any sci-fi. It's all, I like my swords. I like that kind of thing. So yeah, Lord of the Rings. I, when, when I first saw the trailer for Fellowship of the Ring in the theater, I just, it was instant goosebumps. Like I didn't even know it was coming. And I saw like that for, it was, I think when I went to see like Spider-Man, I think the first one is when that premiered and wow. I it like when the Balrog's foot steps down, I'm like, oh my God, they're going to have, there is going to be a Balrog on the screen. I know Scott has no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know but what it is. Just, I think I do okay. know what it is. That's the guy with the flames and the mane and the whip. But like, just knowing that I had painted miniatures of that monster. I don't know how it was like my favorite monster. I'm like, Oh my God, there's going to be a movie with one of those in it, not a cartoon, but like a movie. And, and to know that how it turned out and how well those three movies turned out. And yes, people say they're long. People say they're boring. They can be, but I really, I, if you had to take the three, my favorite out of the three is still fellowship of the ring. Um, it's like a perfect movie. It really is. It with, for me, it's just perfect. Uh, I, I think, the other ones are great. There's parts of Return of the King that I think it's like the giant battle is what I, I live for is seeing stuff like that. And you'll see on a couple of my list. You managed to squeeze five movies into your top You're, 10. And my one. So it was. Okay. All right. That counts. All right. So we're going right. Lord of the Rings. All right. Go. Those are the obvious ones. Yep. Okay. Wait, I got one. Let's pick your least obvious. The most shocking. That will shock me as your one of your favorite. Or do you want to save that? Is that your number one? I don't know that any of them will shock you. Okay. All right. Go. So I'll just say this next one. Um, <laughs> and I've said this before. When I went to the theater to see this, I had no idea what it was even about. Okay. <laughs> and it was Are Raiders of the Lost that... Ark. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. Raiders of the I Lost Ark. All right. I had no idea what it was about. I had no idea what I was going to see. Um, I knew Harrison Ford was in it. I knew it was... George Lucas. I knew it was Steven Spielberg. I watched the first five minutes of that movie where he's in the cave with all the traps and all that shit. And to me, the rest of the movie was going to be him chasing that Belloc for that idol. Okay. Like, and that first five minutes of that movie were so intense. Yeah. You know, and it was kind of typical Spielberg. You had a few scare moments and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But, um, you know, and it was exactly what they wanted it to be. It had the feel of an old like serial from the 30s and 40s. And, I think um, I, that falls into that category of a perfect movie for me. Like Razor, it's a great movie. Yeah, it, it, like, it just, just it was. It and was. I think I now, was in the same boat. I was a lot younger than you when I saw it. But I didn't know what it was about either. I, I don't think a lot of people did. Mm hmm. And I don't think everyone was ready for when their faces melted off at the end. <laughs> no, and, and then no. just the it, what I always liked are the sound effects, the meaty fist pump. Yes, fist yep. Where it sounds like a punch inside of beef. <laughs> yep. You know, and when he's fighting the guy by the airplane and all that, and it, it's like, you know, and you realize no human being could stand the beating he took. No. You know, being drug under a truck yeah. and all that. But if, if you can expel that from your mind for what it is, it's just a, a fun adventure movie. Um, yeah, it, it's almost a perfect movie. And I went and saw it at the theater. You ready? 18 times. Seriously? Seriously. Th that's tied for Empire Strikes Back with me. I remember going to see Empire Strikes Back 18 times, too. I don't think I've ever seen a movie in the theater. Maybe one, one movie twice. I don't I, You know what? I, I've gone 
twice on a couple like uh recently but not too often will i go more than once but see back then yeah you couldn't yeah you didn't have right all right that was well, the your only VHS option to watch be out yeah the vhs will be out or the you know it'll be on tv when well, i can watch it whenever video i want stores. like that's before like i yeah yes so it it's so when something like that came out i remember the first time someone had a copy of star wars like on tape or return mm-hmm. or and i was like oh my god and it was like beta <laughs> it was it's hard to watch but oh i remember when vcrs first started to get popular my brother was really into learning about them so he was going everywhere to look at them. and i remember seeing movies pre-recorded movies and i remember seeing frankenstein and king kong and and i remember asking how much is that king kong and the guy pulled it down to show it to me. It was a hundred dollars. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now the machines back then were yeah four four fifty to five hundred were the cheap machines. We and... still have ours with the levers and the push buttons and the thing pops yeah. up. That's like <laughs> oh yeah, the top pounds. loads lasted yep. forever, man. Those yeah, we still got it. top loads and that's, stuff. Yep. But so um the remote you had to plug in with a cord. Yeah, and you had to tune channels in. If you yep. were going to record channels, remember how, when you had to tune channels in? Yeah. And people, the kids, if anybody's watching this, they probably <laughs> go, what are these old bastards talking about? But yeah. um, it wasn't long after this that it got to the point where you yeah. could buy movies as they come out. But even back then, when you bought them, sometimes they were 50 bucks. There yep. were movies that were 50 bucks, yep. you know. And then when they started to come down into the 20s, that's when that whole buying movies took off, yeah. you know. So, okay. So Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Ark. All right. My next movie is Gremlins. Gremlins. And that's the other movie I watch every Christmas Eve. It is the best Christmas movie. And seeing that in the theater as a kid changed me because it was scary. It was funny. It was the special. There's monsters. There's horror. There's some pretty horrible deaths in that movie for like for kids to watch. And you're still like, I mean, they throw an old lady up the stairs on an electrical chair and shoot her out the window and she dies in the middle of the street. And the gremlins just laugh. And it's a Christmas movie. And I think it is just so well. You're gonna tell me Die Hard's a Christmas movie too. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. No, it's not. It is. It is. Um, but gremlins is is on my list of one of my favorite movies of all time um j- pu- and it, it falls into my i have two that is my there's two puppet movies <laughs> here and that is one of them well i bet i know what the other one is I, i'm sure you do uh but yeah gremlins i think is fantastic so your next one a few good men a few good men yes all right. Um, huh? I I get that. I totally get Jack that. Nicholson yep. was phenomenal in that movie. Um, a lot of people hate Tom Cruise for whatever reason. Well, you know, yeah. I'm one of those people that can get past the whatever. It depends on the movie. Like sometimes but, I can look right past and be like, okay, I can accept him in like Edge of Tomorrow. I love that movie, mm-hmm. and it's Tom Cruise and other movies. I'm like, you I but uh, I just thought this movie was really well done. Um, you good men. Okay. Yeah. All right. My next one. Braveheart. Braveheart. I never saw it. My wife loves it. It's it. it uh, it's my hopeless romantic in me that loves that movie. <laughs> and the, the love story and sacrificing yourself like that whole thing. And again, it goes back to go the back story. to I never saw it, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm Mr. skipping the spoiler. <laughs> How can, oh. so just the swords, the sheer, just again, brutal, horrible violence on a, on a sword level. Yeah. What's Not, the matter with you? you I don't know. I like, I watch, like watching sword fighting and big hammers and that sort of like that. Visceral kind of like, and, yeah. Yeah. I love that stuff. And <laughs> it, cause it, it's so much cooler than a laser gun to me or a laser sword. Um, but Braveheart, it's a great story. And again, we're trying to keep it spoiler free. Everybody's probably, except for Scott, seen Braveheart. But 
it's a great story. It's not my historically... wife keeps it on the DVR, even though she has the DVD. That's she awesome. Keeps it on the DVR, she recorded it. And she keeps it on the DVR so she can watch it. Whenever she... <laughs> it is not grounded in reality. It's historically inaccurate for some of the stuff, but it is still a great movie. And it's just there's some parts like the, just the first 20 minutes, first half hour is just ugh, heart wrenching. And it's a great film. Braveheart's fantastic. All right. Your next one. Well, you mentioned Tarantino. Pulp Fiction. I knew that was coming. Pulp, Pulp Fiction. Fiction. It's a perfect also movie, too. Also the best too. comedy I've ever seen in my life, too. It is a good <laughs> It's funny. We talked and there's about people a out there probably going, comedy, what? It's and funny I'm as like... hell. What's your favorite? All right. What's, I think you said it before. What's your favorite line in the movie? I, I can't say what my favorite line is. Because it's, it's an offensive line. Okay. Um, Give me the part. Uh, when they go to uh, the guy's house, uh, Tarantino's house. Oh, yeah. Okay. And he asked if it's the dead and yeah, okay. yeah, yep. storage. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. Okay. Uh, that's, that's probably my favorite line because I'm like, you know, that's pretty funny. Um, there's a couple lines in that movie that are great. The, um, my favorite line is two words, What? it's when Marcellus Wallace is crossing the street and, Bur- and Bruce Willis is in the car and Marcellus uh-huh. just looks up and goes, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> he just runs him over. Like, I was like, no, oh, oh so good. Yeah. Pulp Fiction Zinna is Zed, such a good baby movie. is a pretty good line. Yeah. And, uh, the, uh. When they call the wolf and he says, it's uh, 15 minutes away. I'll be there in 10. And they show this guy <laughs> fucking ripping down the street. So, um, you know, again, it's a lot of great lines in that movie. It is and it's just, and, the, and they would just shock you. Like the one I mentioned, it would just shock you that he even says it. Yeah. I, okay. Especially for the time. Cause I mean, and, no uh, one kind of knew what he was and where yeah, his and movies then, were uh, going. Yeah. It was, uh, it was crazy. It was crazy, but it was funny. I laughed through that whole movie. <laughs> the funniest part, I think I laughed is when they jammed the needle into uh, yeah. <laughs> Trisha <laughs> Arquette's yep. chest. And, yep. and yeah. All right. Drawn out of trust. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was just, it, it was, it's a fucked up movie, but it's funny as hell. So, Okay. This is the one you probably see coming after my puppet comment. We'll get this mm-hmm. out of the way. The Dark Crystal. What a surprise. <laughs> so The Dark Crystal, it is, it, it's one of those, again, I think I was in first grade when it came out. And I always, it's a puppet thing. I love Jim Henson. And to see Jim Henson cross into and do a complete fantasy film with puppets and the art, artistry that went into making all of that. I probably watched more than the movie itself as a kid, watched the making of. And same with Return of the Jedi, I think. I watched the making of that on loop as a child over and over, watching the, the creature shop. And that was what I always wanted to be. Like, that's what I wanted to do was work at the Jim Henson creature shop and just make stuff like that. And it didn't go that way, <laughs> obviously. But I love the Dark Crystal. I, it's as cheesy as it looks at times now. And they had the sequel thing that came out on, or prequel, that came out on Netflix that got canceled after one season. Um, going back and looking at it, yes, it looks dated. But for the time, I mean, some of that stuff was just so revolutionary, what they did. And the amount of detail that they were able to cram into those sets and those, just the one costume for one of the Skeksis or Mr. Like, it's amazing what they were able to do. But, yep, Dark Crystal. And I knew you saw that coming. All right, your next one. The Cane Mutiny. Okay. What is that? Never heard of it. Am, am I going to be movie shamed? Is this a movie shame moment? Could be. It's a Humphrey Bogart movie. And it's uh, Fred McMurray's in it. And Van Johnson. You know who either of those guys are? No. Fucking kids. <laughs> So anyway, it's a it's a fictitious story because there's never been an actual mutiny on a on a navy uh, ship 
in the United States. Okay. Okay. So that's what. But it's about. Uh, so Bogart plays this captain that seems a little off his rocker until the trial, and then maybe he's not. So, okay. Cool. You know, it's um. Kane Mutiny. Kane. How do you spell Kane? C A I N E. All right, I did it right. Look at that. Yep. All right. Kane. My next one. The Crow. And again, glaring obvious. <laughs> And it's not so much like it's a great movie and there's some great lines in there, but the music was a lot of it was the music I liked, but it's not when everyone thinks of the crow soundtrack, they think of the band, the soundtrack, the score for that film is one of the greatest scores of all time. It's just amazing. And just in the terms, you know, Graham Ravel, he was in another band. I thought it was an old industrial band. And I didn't know that until I watched another documentary about something and I was like, Oh, that's why I like it. So the crow, everyone I'm sure has seen it. Everyone's seen garage kids of the crow, but I just love the story. I love the characters and the lines in that movie as well. And again, not the greatest movie ever made by any means, but I just, it's one, it almost should be on my guilty pleasure list more than anything. And if, if I redid this, it probably would move it onto there. Um, it moved, saint maud into the honorable mentions so the crow you're up there you go next one for me yes the great escape great escape never saw it what is this (laughs) we i mean i knew this was going to be a very different divergent list based on a true story Okay. Uh, World War II. And the Germans uh, basically took all their best, es- all the best escapees and put them in one escape proof. Um, okay. Uh, camp, uh, POW camp. And it tells the story of what they did to escape and then post escape, how many got caught, how many made it. And, it's, a, it's an iconic Steve McQueen. I want to see that actually. It, it, it's an iconic Steve McQueen role. Um, and he even did his own stunts on a motorcycle and stuff like that. So, uh, and it really had a, um, and again, a lot of these guys you probably never heard of, but it had an all star cast as far as Steve McQueen, um, James Garner, Donald Pleasance. Have I seen um, this? I James think... Colburn, Charles Bronson. I may have seen this now that. So, um, yeah. Okay. Great anyway. escape. Great escape. My next one is, and I know, I know you haven't seen this. It's called Martyrs. It's a French horror film. And I've only seen it one time. And I don't ever want to watch it again. Because. It's disturbing <laughs> in a couple different ways. It's brutal. It's very hard to watch. There's a lot of like, it's almost like one well, of those. If you say it's hard to watch, it, must it is be hard bad. to watch. It is a very hard to watch. I want Jamie to watch it, but I know it's going to be hard to watch. It is one of those. It's almost, it's, it, it starts out as one thing and ends up completely different. It starts out as like a torture porn kind of movie. Like, just horrible things happening and it takes a turn and I can't even like, I don't want to give the twist away at all. Um, but there's a twist and the movie shifts and goes completely different and it makes like question your life question the reality of everything. Like kind of, it is awful at times, but I think it's one of the best movies it's one of the only movies to make me go, oh my gosh, like that's, ah, ah, and Martyrs. Everyone I think should watch Martyrs at once, once. I will, I will watch it again. You but watch it's, it again. You might end up laughing at it. Like, I, I don't, well, that's like how The Exorcist was for me. Like I watched it as a kid and was terrified. And now when mm-hmm. I watch The Exorcist, laugh through the whole thing. But well, this, uh, yeah, the twist at the end is just. First time I ever saw that trilogy of terror on TV with a little doll chase. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that thing scared the fuck out of me. I was <laughs> no, looking under my too. bed and shit yep. for a long time. And I was older. 
I was like 12 or 13 yeah. when I first saw that. And every time it was on, I wouldn't watch it. And then finally, later on in life, I watched it yeah. and I'm laughing at all the dumb stuff. Yeah. Karen it's Black like someone just going. shaking that doll. Like, it looks so yeah. weird. <laughs> and I'd be like, what, what are you? Uh, wh- why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? You know, it was like. You know, but I remember watching the first time and she traps it in the suitcase. You see it sawed out of the suitcase with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are down to, I think we have one, two, three, three. Four, four left? Yeah, four left. Okay, go. Tombstone. All right, look at that. Tombstone. Why? Um. Oh, it's easy. Val Kilmer's performance as Doc Holliday was right. fucking priceless. It was priceless. Excellent. And uh, I think that would movie is on a lot of people's top 10 list. Like, I really, and you know, think it it's is. really some of it. You know, I don't believe Kurt Russell is a great actor. And Bill Paxson, of course, is a no, both of them are good actors. Great over actor. Great actors. Um, but um, no, that movie just came together. Perfect. Yeah. And I didn't see it for years because I, I think I explained this when Lace was on. I had seen White Earp, and I thought that was really good with Kevin Costner. So it's like, well, this other stupid movie with Ke- yeah. Kurt Russell isn't going to be good. And then I caught it one day on, like, about halfway through, and I was like, holy crap, this is good. So then I went and got it, and was like, yeah, this is really good. It is a good one. So. Um, my next one, and I know you haven't seen it. <laughs> Hereditary? Any chance? No. No. Uh, another horror movie, and it's these. Hereditary came out in the last few years, and it was. I think it was you are a disturbed little man. But Tony Collette's in it. She should have been nominated for an Oscar. I think there was talk of her being nominated for it. It is. There's a few like if I had my top twenty, there's some other movies on here like horror movies that would be on there like The Witch, and some other stuff. It is one of the creepiest movies it makes you want to take it like it's just creepy through the whole thing and then it goes oh fuck like what the fuck like it goes from something's wrong like you know something's wrong and you can't figure it out like you just don't know what's happening and then it just goes (laughs) and it is a it's hard for me to even explain how much I like it it is just Oh, I get goosebumps thinking about it. It's, it's creepy and it's dirty. It's like one of those gross, not gross in terms of like, it's bloody or horror. Like, even though there's some bloody parts, there's parts you're just like, that's gross. You want to take a shower after watching parts of it, but hereditary. I want to take a shower after doing this show. Sometimes it's it's about family. There's modeling involved in the movie as well. The, The main character has creates dioramas, which is. I think it also kind of feeds in to some of this, but hereditary, beautiful movie, beautifully shot, beautifully acted, terrifying and amazing all at the same time. So, all right. Our top three. Well, not top three, but adventures of Robin hood. Oh, you and lace man. Adventures of Robin. It's a perfect, it's a perfect movie as far as I'm concerned. It's a perfect everything that Robin Hood should be, whether it's factual or not, or ever <laughs> happened, whatever. Adventures of Robin. And that is that's not men in tights, right? That is no jag. That's not men in tights. <laughs> it's not the Kevin Costner one. It's not the Russell Crowe one. It's the Errol Flynn one with Basil Rathbone. Claude Rains. Gotcha. That's what I knew. I knew. Okay. You mentioned this movie earlier. Wizard of Oz. Hmm. I think it's one of the greatest movies ever made. And I love it. Be- and it's one of those, again, as a kid watching that, the amount of just awe inspiring to that. It's sca- there's, there's happy moments. It scares the hell out of you. When they rip the scarecrow apart. I mean, come on. Like just you're they're dismembering this guy in front of everybody and it's just taken like it's okay. Uh but I think just in the technical feat that it was 
and how beautiful it is at times. It, it's a perfect movie. It's one of those. I like, saw just, uh, Museum of Science and Industry had like a Hollywood special effects thing one time. Uh huh. They had some of the Star Wars models and they had some of the uh, independent stages come out. So they had some of those models too. But they had the matte painting from when they went up to the Emerald City. I was going to say the Emerald City one. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it was just, it was really cool I'd to see that in person. And um, I, you know, of all the movies on your list so far, I would say this one surprises I, me. I, the that's most what I thought. Because <laughs> I almost was going to ask you. Is there any movie on your list that could be considered like classic at all? And I, I own this movie. I own the Blu-ray box set of this. So um, as a kid, this movie scared me. Yeah. Not because of anything other than as a kid, I was terrified of storms because my mother was terrified of storms. And so that tornado scene would give me nightmares for, for forever. And I was always scared because my mom was so scared. Now, Present day, Scott, if if you said, hey, man, let's go on a tornado chase fucking uh, vacation. OK, oh, we should I'd do be, that. I'm all that in, show. man. <laughs> I'd be all in. Get as close as you can, because I just think it's awesome. You know, of all the reality type shows and shit you can watch, tornado chasing shows were the ones I would yeah. watch because I yeah. just thought it was cool. So. I, there's uh, one other. Remember, remember when I. Uh... I said I wanted to be Cindy Brady as a kid and would pretend to be Cindy Brady. I was trying to forget that. I would also pretend to be Dorothy once in a while. And I had a little stuffed dog that I would, <laughs> that I had and I would walk down the street. I know my dad wanted to just kill himself sometimes, probably thinking back. I want to kill myself. I know. Is there anybody else that wants to start a podcast? No. <laughs> I'm out. I, I'm out. This I, is, you know. I thought she was gorgeous. Like, I thought she was the hottest chick in the world at the time. So you wanted to be her. So that's how, like how I, I didn't know how to like put that in my brain. Like there, like, I don't know. I don't know what that was. Cause you had the scarecrow's brain. That's why. <laughs> that's probably what it was. All right. We're down to our final two. Patton. 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 I have not seen Patton. Really? I have not. And I kind of want to. Patton is good. I feel Patton like I should really have good. seen this. Yeah. Okay. Patton why is, is it good? Why is it on there? Um You know, and I, I don't know if you noticed, but a, a few of these movies on my list were based in the World War II era. Uh-huh. Um It's just an era that I really I, I don't know, it, it's fascinating to me. And um, he was, I don't know, he's like me. He got in trouble. His mouth ran off <laughs> over sometimes and he got in trouble. But, uh, you know, he was, uh, you know, brilliant, actually. You know, but just there were parts of him that, you know, his personality that were just, you know, and not everything you'd agree with, but it's right. Um, so in the movie, George C. Scott was just fantastic, just fantastic. And uh, one of my favorite lines in the movie, and this won't spoil anything, uh, Carl Malden plays Omar Bradley, who was like at one point the top general, other than Eisenhower, he was like the top general, and there's a battle scene where he's like in it and he's running uh through he's through a foxhole and they dive into a foxhole and his helmet comes off and this other like basic army guy just comes in and jumps jumps uh jumps in the foxhole with him and says who the hell's in charge of this <laughs> outfit and and carl malden says i don't know but they ought to hang him <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like it's, you know it's what? i'm gonna it's great. Patton is, uh, it's fun. It's fun. Now there are some inaccuracies that people can't stand. And that is, this was filmed in Spain. Okay. And they used all American tanks. Both sides had the same tanks. They were just painted different. Okay. So they didn't actually have tiger tanks yeah. and, and stuff like that, you know? So there's people that that 
stuff like that drives nuts, you know, but I can get past that. So where, like, I, it's obvious, unless it's your number one, where would Saving Private Ryan be? Um, I don't even know if it would be in my top 20. It really? was okay. Yeah, okay. it was okay. I'm not saying it was bad. I will say the D-Day scenes. That's what I just, I got it for amazing. Christmas. Amazing. Yes. Because, because I got it in four. I wanted it as a system tester for sound and mm-hmm. all that sort of thing. But yeah, it, it's. It's okay. I mean, parts of it are just the knife part. Ugh. Oh my god. So yeah, Patton is. Uh... Patton. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> my runner-up. And this is this is a real runner-up. Like this is almost my favorite movie of all time. Well, see, Patton wasn't a runner-up. I just okay. I... Well, I'm just I mean, this is just how it worked out. But this is I love this movie. And everyone's going to make fun of me. Pee-wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> it is one of the best movies ever created. It is hilarious. It's a one. It is. It is Tim Burton's best movie. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. What's t- what's better? Ed Wood. No. Ed Wood is by far no. Tim Burton's no. best movie. No. Nope. Followed by Batman, the first nope. Batman movie, nope. and anything after that is nope. shit. Nope. Okay. Pee Wee's Big Adventure is the best Tim Burton movie. I could watch this movie endlessly, on loop, over and over and over. There's parts of it that I, I like. There's different levels to where I find it funny at times, and it's just, I, I love it. I love see, it. See, you grew up in that generation it. when that show was on, and the you well, know. But the show came on after the movie. It wasn't like, and the sh- the show was on when I was like in junior high, probably, or and it so it wasn't really. An- I watched it because it was funny, but it wasn't aimed as much for me. I think, but but the movie is different than the show, and he even like his mm-hmm. old Pee Wee stuff was more adult than it was. But there's just, and that's the thing about it. Like, if you're an adult. There's parts of that that are just so funny. And then he got caught jacking it in a fucking where in a who theater. Hasn't? Or I mean, come on. In a I mean, theater? Who, who doesn't? I mean, what, like. Not in a theater. <laughs> okay. There we go. Why don't you tell us, Jason? Why don't you tell us no, about no, your I don't have theater. one of those stories, actually. But Popcorn I mean, that's surprise. what everyone does at those theaters he was at. And they purposely, you know, they got him for no reason other than to mess with him. But, I mean, paging Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman, it's the great when he's playing himself in the movie about himself at the end when he's playing a bellboy and he's just looking dead dead on at the camera because he doesn't know. It. Oh my god, I love the that. only thing about that movie Crazy I thought was cool. Larry. Oh man, and I haven't seen the whole movie all the way through. What? Oh. Oh. But the the only part of that movie I thought was cool that I did see was when they had the Ghidra. Didn't they have a Ghidra? There was, they, yep. And then when he was yep. running through, yep. Yeah, th- yep. I thought that was kind of cool. Yep, when he's so. running through the movie studios. Yes. Yep. All right. Here we are. We have arrived. Those were nine. We saved for your favorite movie of all time, Scott. What is it? What do you think it is? I was going to say Frankenstein. Like, I <laughs> thought that would have been it. I- the Avengers. No. That's, all right, go ahead. What is it? Casablanca. Oh, God. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> Why? I'm all godding myself. <coughs> That's obvious. Why didn't I? Oh. Uh, all right. Why is Casablanca your favorite movie of all time? It's a perfect movie. Why? It's a love story. It's an anti hero story. It's. It, it's. The characters are all great. It's well that's why acted. I like Braveheart. Like that's Braveheart. Okay, it, it's. Uh... And what's funny is, everyone always said, you know, what a great movie Casablanca is, and I hadn't seen it until I was about twenty-one. And they showed it. They were showing it on Channel Nine in the afternoon one time, and you know, it was, again, it was pre-VCR. Mm-hmm. So I said, all right, I'm finally going to watch this. And I was just so blown away by this movie. I don't know. I why. haven't I, seen it. So I, I love classic it. movies. And to me, this is the classic of classics. It's the classic of classics. Yes. Hmm. So. 
Casablanca. What do you think mine is? Oh my god! It I... <laughs> after this all over the place list, I just gave Psycho it. Gorman. It's not. No, it's not Psycho Gorman. Um. If you go back and think there, I said I wanted a model kit from this movie on our episode we did of Dream Kit. Yeah, which means it was probably something I've never heard of. Go ahead. Rushmore. Wes Anderson movie. I think it is my, it is my favorite movie of all time. It hits my level of comedy right in the right spot. It has the right amount of just like melancholy to it and sadness and balanced with off brand kind of not everyone's going to think it's funny humor. Mm -hmm. And it's just, to me, it's a perfect movie. I, uh, every one of West Anderson movies are, are fantastic. There's a couple that are, eh, but I still love, like there's nothing he's done that I've not liked. And Rushmore, when I saw it in the theater back, I think it was 98. It was just, to me, I just, I love it. And this is one of those, <laughs> Robert Tundee hates, hates Wes Anderson movies. And it's probably killing him that I even said this was my number one. But Rushmore is my He's most favorite. He's not going to get to this point. No one's yeah, going to stay awake to this point. They're not. But Rushmore is my number one movie of all time. My absolute favorite movie. And I want a, a Max Fisher model kit. Somebody. Please. Or I might even pay somebody to sculpt one digitally and do it. But So the differences in our list. I, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. And, and, and I think this is. I, and I'll tell you where I think it comes from. So many movies on my list are what you call classics. Okay. Even the more modern ones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Pulp Fiction, yeah. uh, Tombstone. Okay. <clears throat> a few good men are, are considered kind of classics. Okay. And then, of course, the rest of them. And I think that comes, really, a lot of that comes from the generation, I think, and the interests as, as a kid. Yeah. And so when I was a kid, Channel 9 showed classic movies every night at 10.30. Okay, WGN showed classic movies mm -hmm. every night at 10.30. So I saw a lot of these movies um, then, you know, and we had family classics um, where I saw like Adventures of Robin Hood and stuff like that, War of the Worlds. So I really, it was not impossible for me to go backwards. Where it seems like most of the stuff you have started when you were a kid and went forward, with the exception yeah. of Wizard of Oz. I think if we expanded it, I would have had more older movies that I've seen on my list. Like if it was a top, War of the Worlds would be on there, and mm -hmm. and so, like Moby Dick would be on there. I think some of that stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Like a couple of my it movies wasn't what you thought it was about. <laughs> say, <laughs> St. Maud, I saw it last year. It's a brand new movie, but it, it yeah. absolutely did. And same with Bone Tomahawk, new movies. They're some of the best movies I've ever seen. They're so good. Um, and you're probably a little more open minded than I am. Oh, you that's know, for like, sure. Like, you I, know, I, I don't you think listen to crazy music. <laughs> there's any question. Or I'm more mainstream classic rock. And, I wore this shirt on purpose. This is one of my favorite. I think Akira is one of the best movies ever made. And so what it is, is, and again, you're really not a baby boomer. No, you're in a baby boomer hobby. I am a, in a baby boomer, but hobby. you're not a baby boomer. So the baby boomers still had that link mm -hmm. to the classic stuff because our parents dated way back. Which is know? why I think, like, when we go to bring this to model kits, this that's why it's hard for me to find stuff that I like mm -hmm. when it comes to garage kits. It's they they there's not a lot of me in our hobby. So where three D printing, it's like, oh my gosh, someone's people like me are well, making yeah, because, stuff. So what it is, is you have a lot of the younger people in the 3d printing world yeah. that are you and younger. Yeah. Okay. And that's why I have a problem. Like when we show Tony's Iron Man, that's Iron Man to me, 1968 Iron Man. That's it. Okay. Yeah. But, I, but I agree with you though. I, th but you'll the, not find another Iron Man like that out there. Um, but I, I agree with you completely. There's too many of the regular Iron Man. out. I, I want to see more of that comic stuff. I agree with you there completely mm -hmm. so, all right this this loathe list 
which I wasn't prepared for. Okay. Um, well, I only got a couple. I, I, I have one group of movies that will fit into my loathe that'll count. Okay. It's going to be the Marvel movies. Oh, it's absolutely the Marvel movies. 100% the Marvel movies. They're all terrible, except for a couple of them. They're, I, we need to do a whole loathe episode like this. But I think the Avengers is terrible. Terrible. Oh, I hate it. I the hate first that one movie. is good. I, I, I no, can see. No, it's not. It's, I let's can get see how the fight. series deteriorated, but no. All of the Marvel movies. When Here's the exception. Is Guardians of the Galaxy is when it made that turn. And I, I like Guardians of the Galaxy, but since that did so well, I think the rest of the Marvel movies were like, we got to make these kind of comedies and tell a, a stupid joke every five seconds. And they're so, they're so made for everybody. And that's why I don't, they're afraid to offend anyone. They're afraid to like not make someone, it's a popcorn movie. I get that, but they're terrible. It's let's there's no real outcomes and there's no real stakes up until end game and, and all that. But all again, since you're playing with timelines, nobody's dead. Nobody's dead. Right. They're going to bring them back at some point. No one's going to die. Even in Civil War, you didn't think they were actually going to kill each other in that movie, which it's a war. People should die like. And, and that's not even what bothers me about them. It's more of. Avengers, it's a hateful little animal. Dude, Avengers, it's fucking terrible. And they just sit around, they do their little fight, and then they tell a joke, and then they go tell a joke, and then they do a little fight, and then they tell a joke, and then someone's sad, and then they tell a joke. It's dumb. I hate it. I hate the Marvel movies. And that was my loathe list, was going to be the Avengers, because that's what kicked it off. My exceptions in the Marvel universe. I really, I like the Incredible Hulk. When it was the one that, <coughs> which one was that? The one that came out before the Avengers, not the. Well, there were two. Not the Eric Bana one. Okay, so the Edward Norton one. The Edward Norton Hulk. I like that one, and I like Blade. Doesn't count in the Marvel universe yet. And there's an Guardians of the Galaxy. The first one's okay. The rest, I could give a shit. Like, I'm but you like Batman man. versus Superman. I, I, that movie was far better than any Marvel movie. No, it wasn't. No, period. it was a piece of shit. No. And Aquaman right. could have been the worst superhero movie I ever I saw. I never saw Aquaman. Man of Steel no. was fantastic because no, it, it made, it no, made Superman, wasn't. made Superman do Superman stuff like throwing trains. That's awesome. Okay. But it made Superman into a broody, that's shitty. Fine. I don't care. Okay. No, that's not <laughs> Superman. Superman is truth, justice in the American way, pal. Okay. That's, but since that movie, he turned into that more. Well, yeah, but because you're coming up with comics Superman. Have imagine, taken now I mean, if you're Superman growing up, imagine your life would be pretty crappy being Superman as a teenager and as an early, as a young adult. Like, I got all these powers. I can't do anything. I can't tell anyone. I have to hide all the time. And your favorite part of the movie, I watched my dad die. <laughs> That anyway, all stuff. right, your loathe list because we're okay. My lo- loathe list is quick. Um, any of the Lord of the Rings crap that I was number that was two on your list. I knew list. that was going to be there. All right, okay. Any of it, but what's yeah. funny is I was going through my DVDs and I own it. So um, yeah, it's long and boring. Yet you'll watch long and boring movies that are far not as entertaining. But see, this stuff doesn't entertain me. I'd rather watch. The a two rather, and a half yeah, hour Great Escape or Patton, you know. Well, yeah, like Godfather, it's okay. Ugh. All right, another on my loathe list is the '76 version of my uh, first movie I mentioned. I don't even credit it with that name. Okay, that's King Kong to me. When I think of Kong, that's no, one. that's not. It's not King Kong to anybody. That's got sense. I'm okay, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But that's the one I watched as a kid over and over and over. Yeah, it's it's horrible. It, it's and uh hey my last loathe movie and then we're gonna get and we're gonna get we're gonna comments get too yeah okay the year the vietnam movies came out and there were three of them hamburger hill full metal jacket and platoon and Wait i thought platoon sucked okay 
There's nothing I thought you were going to say Full Metal Jacket sucked. No, Full Metal Jacket was the best of the three. I, I mean, that Full Metal Jacket okay. is on that top 20. Like, that's such and it's really movie. the only Kubrick film I really care for yeah. is Full Metal Jacket. So it's, it, oh, it's, uh, that's good. Yeah, Full Metal Jacket, no, two, I liked. Yeah. I so, so those three are like movies that a lot of people like that I hate. Except for, I don't know, most people don't, with sense, don't like the King Kong movie. But <laughs> All right. And if you think you do, watch the sequel. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, that was our top 10 movie. This may change, you know, five years yeah. from now, we may have different lists. I'm sure we will. Uh, if you hated this episode, talk to Kendall Conniff. You wanted to hear our list. Uh, we have emails, voicemails, and corrections, Scott. Oh, you said we didn't have voicemails. I'm just saying this is the segment we're at. Oh, sorry. He, Scott just spoiled it. We have no voicemails. but. Here's the voicemail number for those of us <laughs> that would like to call uh, 708-816-4299. Leave us a voicemail. Tell us your top 10 movies in under a minute. That would be great. Keep those voicemails short. If you do call 708-816-4299. Don't draw on like that Clark guy. Okay. <laughs> uh, and our email, if you would like to send us an email about anything, it is modelclubtv at gmail.com. And we are very short on emails this episode as well. Um, do we have any corrections? Did we mess anything up last episode? I have a correction. You have a correction. Well, I have an add-on. An add-on. So, <laughs> some asshole <laughs> left a voicemail last time asking if I had ever painted anything. Okay. And so I don't know if I'm, what I'm going to get here, but... Ooh. Okay. What did you blow that up and like was that framed in your house somewhere? What is I, I just printed big ones. Okay. One point. <laughs> um just for the hell of it. So anyway. Scott um, did post something or paint something. I, I did paint something. And this was the first kid I ever entered in a contest. And uh let's see. Okay, I'll do one more. Because this I made this base. And what was funny about that base is um you can it's see that's all plastic struck stuff yeah and you can't see the mesh yeah you can't kind of there that's a uh needlepoint mesh that i put there so cool. that's all that was but um so at the time i was pretty proud of that and and uh, you should be and i got a certificate of merit and uh what year was that 1996 all right <laughs> so there you go clark bastard oh man i sent clark the tardis even though he did wanted you? me to bring i did i sent it to him so he should be getting it by the time he has read this I he won't say nothing there. he's an ungrateful bastard I know. I know we shouldn't even mention his name i know all right so we have two emails uh we'll do this one first uh from logan torres logan sends me a lot of emails and most of them say don't read this on the air <laughs> uh this one says you can read this one or you can print this uh oh watch this Ta-da. king kong an old relic from 1933 yes it is 80 plus years old yes repeat it is 80 plus years old 89 and, if you can do basic third grade math but anyway go ahead and some people of baby boomer era have a weird fixation with stop motion puppets that is not a real gorilla it doesn't look like a real gorilla gorilla and a character yes as I well say, I will say I grew up watching this movie when I was a kid. Four generations watching this, I'm sure. Jason watched this. I'm aware of technical achievements back then. I know Willis O'Brien and Ray Harryhausen and achieved, and they achieved back. I'm reading it verbatim. Uh, and time marched on for some. Some. Did you know, Scott, that Peter Jackson has one original metal skeleton puppet from King Kong? This is how much he loved this movie. King Kong is not a hero. He didn't die for our sins because he was a fictional character. It says in some books, people shouldn't worship false idols. Well, Peter Jackson's King Kong is much better because it looks and acts like a real gorilla. The world, the word classic is overused like nostalgia. <laughs> to this end, Scott is stuck in a time warp. No way of getting him out. Logan Taurus. A real gorilla? He acts like a real gorilla? Okay. So, 
Hold on. Can Stop. I, wait, let me put right one there. thing in here. I disagree with him on this. I don't think King Kong's supposed to look like a real gorilla. I don't either. And that's one of the problems I had with it. Okay. King Kong is kind of like an anomaly. Right. I agree. All right. And, so. And real quick, but, I just also, when the original, like they redesigned the King Kong from Peter Jackson. Because if you look at some of the statues and repaints that came out, they look, they don't look like the gorilla from the movie. They don't look like King Kong. They look yeah. like it's kind of like an old kind of crustier thing. And I think that would have been a hundred times better. But well, like ahead. when Disney redid Mighty Joe Young. Okay. And I don't know if you ever saw that one or not. I did. Okay. I did. And from the original, the original Mighty Joe Young looked more like the King Kong stop motion puppet. So Disney redid it and did it like a real gorilla. And I loved it. I thought it was extremely well done. I, I think it's a really underrated movie. Okay. Um, of course, you had Bill Paxton in it and overacting, but you know, it was corny. It was Disney, but the story was there. And, you know, it was, you know, and that first scene, I don't know if you remember where the poachers are out and he's running through the, you know, yeah. it was like, yeah, this looks right. Okay. The Jackson movie never looked right. Now let's talk about acting like a real gorilla. I don't think a real gorilla is going out into Central Park on the ice, holding a woman, <laughs> and skating around. Okay. I don't think that's happening. Okay. Sorry. You're wrong. Okay. It, it's, it's that. And the way they, they tried to have him move like a real gorilla holding uh, Naomi Watts. Okay, would have killed her. Would have killed any human being ever. Okay. And then when she's falling and he's got the dinosaurs biting at him and all that. No, yeah. no, no. You know, it's too much. I'll take the original King Kong yeah. boxing the T Rex any day over that piece of shit. So there we go. <laughs> all right. I've had my room. All right. Next, our other email. Next our, our, our final email. And this is kind of a cool one. I love these glasses. I don't lose them. Uh, hey Jason and Scott, a, I made a model. This is from, uh, Bucky Saint Bucky, Tim Tim Kalu. How does Tim say his last name? He has three names: Tim Kalu, aka Tim Fortuna, aka Bucky Saint Bucky. So I'm I'm butchering his last real name. I know. So anyway, hey Jason and Scott, I made a Model Club TV nameplate for you guys. Print them off and use them as business cards at Wonderfest or print a big one for the table. LOL. Uh, I, I can do different fonts if you like. I only use the Lord of the Rings font to get Scott's goat. <laughs> Comes out small, but you can scale to whatever you like. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. I love it. We are going to use them. We'll have them at the, we're going to do something with them. We'll either turn them into magnets or business cards, keychains, something. And we'll have them at Wonderfest. Uh, the other part of this is, and and here's a Godfather one just to keep it fair. Honestly, it took me 30 years before I ever watched The Godfather. I don't see what the big deal was. Lots of good actors, but other than that, dot dot dot. And that's kind of exactly how I felt about it. It's kind of eh, like okay, didn't live up to the hype. And that's our emails. We have some animal pictures though, Scott. We do. We have uh. <laughs> A good friend, Virginia Peters, who you mentioned earlier today. Yes. And I think she sent me pictures before, and it's just they didn't get in. So so we have the tortoise, and the little tortoise's name Looks is, like a Russian, Russian tortoise. If I'm wrong, let me know. Snips. Aw. And that's one of her cats, Storm. So mm. there you go. I, I much prefer the tortoise over the cat. Of course you do. All right, did we solve the world's problems? I wish I was a guy? tortoise, because all the backstabbing I get on this King Kong stuff. And all, I wish I was a tortoise, because you have know, a little harder time. Oh, my God. All right, that's it. That's the show. It's a long one. That was a long one. People are going to hate this one. Oh, well. Oh, no, 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 no. I love our viewers. Okay. I, I, <laughs> That's I why everyone emails Scott and they know I'm cranky and cantankerous. 
people ask me all the time, what's wrong with him? Did he really do traveling bondage? And I'm like, there's a lot wrong did. with me. <laughs> One you of know, these days. I tell him all the time. He's a freak show. So that I am until next time. Episode 44. April 44. and folks. Wonderfest is coming. Wonderfest is coming. Oh boy. Ugh. So in April fools. We got April fool there. All right. You're putting the wrong way. There you go. All right. We'll see everybody I'm next backwards. time. I look at it. I'm backwards.